Are you an adventurer looking to take your hunt to the next level? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the East Meets West Hunt podcast presented by Spartan Forge. On today's episode, I am joined by Allie D'Andrea, better known as Outdoors Allie, and her husband, Nick Berger. I've been friends with these two for quite a while and watched them embrace learning to hunt the big woods of Pennsylvania, which led to a dream season in 2021. We talk about mushroom hunting, a horseback Wyoming elk hunt, creating a living from content creation, helping new hunters, archery bear hunting success, and much more. The Spartan Forge app utilizes years of military background and machine learning to pull from millions of data points to accurately predict deer movement, including GPS data, 30 years of weather, academic and state research. The new app includes GPS mapping with incredible aerial imagery, offline dependability, deer prediction, weather updates, journal entries, and much more. You can use the code East Meets West to save 20% off the Spartan Forge app at spartanforge.ai. Tethered is a company founded on the principles of educating the hunting community on saddle hunting while creating the most innovative, lightweight, safe products for saddle hunting. They have mobile hunting gear options for all types of hunters and continue to push the envelope. Speaking of pushing the envelope, they just dropped their new carbon fiber saddle platform at the ATA show and will be available soon. To learn more about tethered and saddle hunting, head over to tetherednation.com. Maven is building the highest quality optics at half the price of their competitors through their direct consumer business model. They want to create the best optics for the job, period. The products are back with a lifetime no fault warranty and an incredible customer experience. Maven just launched the CRS-1 and CRS-2, the first rifle scopes in the award-winning C-Series collection. Based on the popularity of the C-Series optics and on requests from customers, they developed a completely new lineup of rifle scopes at a lower cost. You can use the coupon code EASTMEETSWEST-GIFT for a free gift with any full-price optics order at mavenbuilt.com. Kip Folks is the co-founder of Under Armour, an avid hunter and just all-around hardworking American. When I heard that he was building a brewery, I was super excited to check it out. And since then, I've become friends with Kip and Big Truck Farms has grown into what I would expect. He has been extremely supportive of the podcast and really hunting in general. So it went without saying that Big, Big Truck would make a great partner of the podcast. The big truck name and icon promotes the idea of adventure and going past the unknown. They embrace the mindset of hard work and the outdoor lifestyle on the farm with an earn a beer mentality. They support and host archery shoots, donate to veterans, and make damn good beer. Check out Big Truck Farms at btfbeer.com and visit the farmhouse in Parkton, Maryland. Last year was a wild year for censorship for hunters and anglers. We partnered with the social media platform Go Wild to combat mainstream social media censorship. Go Wild was built by the outdoorsmen and women, by hunters and anglers just like you. Go Wild is a free social community. Not only are your photos not censored, they're encouraged on Go Wild. Go Wild gives you points for things like sharing your trophies, gear reviews, and inviting friends. As you earn points, you unlock awesome rewards too, such as gift cards, free swag, knives, huge discounts on brands like Garmin and Tethered, and so much more. And if you create a free account, you can unlock $10 just for trying it out. And to download, it's free, so download GoWild.com to get started and use the code East Meets West to save 10% off all gear on the website, including that tethered and Garmin products. So check that out uh, over at time to go wild.com. So this week I do not have a Mountain Buck Monday post. So I actually, I was at the ATA show over the weekend and it looks like that I got COVID there. And yesterday when I was, uh, yesterday would have been Monday when I would have done the, the Mountain Buck Monday stuff. 
I was down and out pretty good and was having trouble even moving off the couch or doing much of anything. So, uh, yeah, I, so I didn't, I didn't get that out this week. So, uh, it wasn't fair to put it on this week's episode. I'll just start it back up again next week, um, with the story. So keep sending those in. Definitely not done with those, but, um, yeah, the, um, the ATA show, uh, was, was a good time. It was way different than any other ATA show that I've been to. I think this is the sixth year that I've been to one and it was just, there wasn't as many vendors there. It was pretty slow. Um, but it, uh, at the same time, it was nice to be able to get to see everything and, and check out some of the new gear. Like I said, Tether's new carbon fiber platform, uh, just a whole bunch of, of good stuff that was being dropped, dropped there at the show. Um, I, I honestly, it was only there for one day, so I didn't get a whole lot of time to, I, I, I definitely didn't even, you know, there wasn't that many booths there. I, I definitely didn't get to, around to most of them. So it, um, but anyways, it's, it, uh, overall it was a good show and, and got to talk to some people and, and meet some more people. And yeah, it was, it was just a, a good time overall, other than the fact that it was definitely, uh, a COVID super spreader and, uh, and myself along with some others, uh, went down with it there. Like I said, I'm still sound pretty shitty here trying to, trying to talk, but feeling a lot better on day two than I was on, on day one. So hopefully I'm on the, the upswing of that there. So, um, with that being said, I have a podcast here with Allie DeAndrea and Nick Berger, friends of mine. They have been friends of mine for the last three or four years here and just great people overall. Really enjoy spending time with them and, and getting to to um, to be be friends with them and seeing them grow as hunters in the in the Pennsylvania wilds. Uh, so it's been, it's been cool and I'm glad to get to share this episode with you guys and would love to get some feedback and anything that you want to hear going forward here as far as topics or guests or what you're kind of looking at from the vision of the podcast, please send in that feedback. I'd love to, love to hear it and try to take that into, uh, account as I'm starting to move forward with things. So I hope everyone has a a great rest of your week and we will talk to you soon. All right. We're live. Nick Berger, Allie DeAndrea. Welcome back. Thank you, Bo. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks for coming. It's been, yeah. Thank you for having me. It's funny because, uh, you're where you guys have your camp at. It's only like, we were just saying 45 minutes from where I live and you guys have been here all fall Yeah, and I haven't made it up here and that's my fault. And we haven't made it to you yeah, either. Haven't made, we made came it. to see you last year though. You did. You did. Yep. You came to my house right after I had bought it actually. Yeah. And, um, we had fun. Yeah. We, we had did. a lot of fun. <laughs> it was like the heat of COVID. And Peanut like, butter whiskey. Did I feel like, the, did I have, did I have like furniture and stuff at the house yet? Yeah. You I slept did. on the Barely. floor. Well, yeah, I think we had a blow up mattress. Yeah, on your living room floor. Yeah, I, yeah, okay, I do. It was like it was early on. It uh-huh. was just when I was we getting ate in there. Your bull, didn't we? Yeah, we had oh, my yeah. bull. We had your bull steak. My bull elk. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we drank a lot. I think a mm-hmm. little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> a year later. Doing it again. Yeah, we're doing it yeah. again. Too much fun. But. So this is actually the second take in the intro. We had <laughs> we had started it, and then the the wood burner in the back was a little bit loud. But we were just talking about how the last time that I did a podcast with you guys was actually three years ago already, almost probably to the, the day. Like it was December of 2018 or whatever. Yeah. So it's 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 crazy. That was the first time that I had met you guys in person. We had a mutual really? friend, Joe Sangimino, and and I'd reached out. I think I'd reach out to you. Joe was one like, you need to get a hold of my friend Nick and Allie. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. And he's like, they have a camp near you. And I think that's how we originally met. I'm going to take your word for it. That yeah. Sounds about right. That's that was crazy. the first, that time, was we the met first time that we met. Yeah. And I just trusted you to come into my house like that. <laughs> yeah, you did. And <laughs> yeah, and I even spent the night. So that was, that was, <laughs> yeah. that was weird. But yeah. yeah. Thank you. And Actually, what's these crazy? days, uh uh-uh, uh, that's not happening. Yeah. Well, so we were talking before you came over tonight, and 
we were like, oh, when's the last time we saw Bo? And we realized that it's been at least a year, if not over yeah, a year. Yeah, probably a year and a half. And we were both like, wow, like social media really does make it feel like we see you all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like it's nuts. It is. And it's it's been, it's been, uh, it's been weird. I wish that like, I wish that we could get together more and stuff. And it's just, everybody's just so busy. And I hate saying that like busy because it's like make time, but it's just, Things go by so fast, I guess. And I, I literally was today. I was like, I actually it was about two weeks ago. I was gonna gonna text you guys and see. I know you had said you were gonna be here till like December twentieth, and I was like, all right, I gotta I gotta make it up there before then. And then I just forgot. And then today I was like, wow, like that's coming up like at the end of the weekend. Mm-hmm. They're gonna be leaving, so I need to I need to get up there, yes. and make make it a point to go see those guys. Yeah, yeah I was I'm excited when you texted me this morning. Yeah. I was like, hell yeah, yeah, Friday night, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and we we and you guys were just hunting in New York today, mm-hmm. and I was planning on hunting there this weekend. But tomorrow's supposed to be a washout. So. Oh yeah, a monsoon. <laughs> yeah, Sunday we'll all be there hunting in the same area. <laughs> yeah, trying to you know be covert, but we'll all be right around the same spot. Yeah, I know. It's funny. We were actually looking at the map, and we were really uh-huh. or very close. Actually, one of the areas that I was <laughs> looking at going to, you guys were just there today. So I was like, that's cool. That's probably a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. That, that means that I'm in the right spot, I guess. Yeah, I or that we're I mean, in the right yeah, spot. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, it's, I'm glad that Nick had talked me into having a little bit of his Buffalo Trace. Store pick. Store mm-hmm. pick bourbon here. Stuff. I'm a big bourbon guy. And like lately, I've been a big bourbon guy. I've, I've I always liked whiskey, but it was always like the cheap, like just get drunk type. Rebel yell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, just Mix get it with drunk some type, Coke. But, yeah. And now I'm just like, I like just sipping on it. Buffalo is a good sipper. Yeah, it is. Do you need an ice cube? No, this is, this is just fine. Taste. Not that I'm a bourbon connoisseur, but I know (laughs) that ice is a part of it. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not super picky with it. I actually have been making my own old fashions. Yeah. But. That's fun. I don't, um, I don't do it necessarily right because I, you're supposed to put like sugar water in Mm -hmm. it with it. And I just do. it's a simple syrup. Yeah, I just do bitters and whiskey. <laughs> so, you know I what? make my own margaritas. So that's why I was asking you about tequila earlier, because I take margaritas really seriously. Okay, so uh, hold on a second. When you ask me if I like tequila, I don't like tequila straight. Margaritas are something that I love more than anything in the entire world. Oh my God, I make it with agave, Too late now. That'll fresh be a- lime. When you come to Florida. Post party. Post party. Yeah. Post podcast party. I, okay. Dude, I can't do a margarita. I can't do tequila. No. Really? He breaks it makes, out in it makes my face like purple mm. and it doesn't like restrict my breathing, but it gets itchy. <laughs> like my throat, I'm like, ah, I can't itch it really? and it's scratchy. Yeah. Some it's type weird. Of allergic reaction, weird. I think. Although I think it mostly happened to you when you were drinking like Jose Cuervo. So yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah and that, that's what my girlfriend like opened up. I was up. also in New York City. And, oh, is she yeah, a tequila yeah, gal? Boy. Yeah, she is. Mm-hmm. And she opened up to me that she's like, well, what kind of tequila gal? I'm like, I don't know, just tequila. And she's like, it's Jose, right? Yep. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Like, that's why you throw up in your mouth every time. You <laughs> yeah. Tequila, you know? Yes. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, and I start having good stuff and I, I, I'm able to have, you know, sip on that straight if I need to, but it's still mm-hmm. not a preference. Oh, not a fan. I yeah. I just can have it all. <laughs> yeah. So how, so how do you make these homemade margaritas? A margarita. Why are they so special? Uh, it's special because it's made from scratch, quote unquote. So I use fresh limes that I squeeze by hand and that. I think that in itself makes a really big difference compared even to, you know, preserved lime juice. The flavor is so different than a fresh squeezed lime, similarly to like orange juice, right? So if you squeeze yourself freshly squeezed orange juice, it's going to taste way better than the stuff that you buy in a, you know, gallon at the grocery store. Um, So it starts there. But for the sweet part of it, I use agave and I think there's something to that as well. The agave just creates <laughs> a better balanced margarita. And then you can have a lot of fun with flavors. So I'll add jalapenos and pineapples. Sometimes I'll do strawberries. I always like mine on the rocks with salt on the rim. All I know is it oh, makes a mess. Delicious. <laughs> Next morning, it looks like the Willy Wonka factory in here. There's syrup, sticky shit 
everywhere. <laughs> no, that's what it's oh like when I make pizza. God. I also make pizza from scratch. I make my own dough. And that is like flowers on the ceiling. Yeah, I'm kind of a neat freak too. So. Yeah, that's I, maybe Ooh. that's why I don't like. I'm Gets not like me. huge into cooking. You know, like oh. I, I'm simple guy. Like throw steak on the grill type of deal because I don't I, I don't like mess. Pardon my French, but I fuck up the kitchen. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> Bad. I do. Like I yeah. Yes. I make a mess in the kitchen. She's a frat brother. She's a frat brother. I, I'm Dude, a brother that can cook. She can cook. Yeah, you can. I've you've cooked for me here before, and it, I, yeah, you have. I don't remember exactly what it was. It was something venison related. Yeah. Your mom. It was deer steaks that your mom. Uh, oh yeah, I brought. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I and I've gotten even better, like way better since then. Oh yeah, dude. She can I've, like she can cook. I've improved significantly, really? especially. Yeah, I actually think that oh, whenever bomb. the lockdown started. I think naturally, like a lot of people, because we were staying in even more, yeah, because we had to, I was cooking more, and I've really worked on improving my technique and improving my cooking skills. Really? Yeah. So, what you're saying is I'm basically staying in the weekend now. Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Dude, you're more than welcome. Yeah, I, yes. know, I know. There's plenty of that, food, yeah. bourbon, <laughs> and an extra bed. Yes, yeah, we've got I, a cozy yeah, spot for you. I would definitely have to go to church twice on Sunday after that. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a church around here? I don't think I don't so. Even know. I don't know. We're kind of in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. Yeah. So it's so what what have you guys been up to? What what's been going on lately in Nick and Allie's mm, life? Well, uh busy. I feel like we're very seasonal people. So right now with it being the fall, as every other hunter listening to this podcast knows, like the fall is hunting season. So that's been nonstop fun, nonstop work. Um, But like throughout the ebb and flow of this year, it's been super seasonal. Like we started in Florida, we were fishing. I caught my first pompano this year, which for those of you that don't know, pompano are this fantastic uh, little silver fish that... Um, you can catch in the salt water and they are just like the classic white flaky fish. The best. The best tasting white flaky fish. And there are a lot of great tasting white flaky fish, but pompano are definitely one of them. Uh, so I caught my first pompano. We caught a bunch of snook. Um, I got into mushroom hunting this year. Like really into mushroom hunting, foraging. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Specifically here in Pennsylvania. And holy crap, Pennsylvania is like the mushroom foraging capital of the US. True. It's remarkable. Really? Actually, mm-hmm. I'm probably going to get this stat slightly incorrect, but approximately 60% of all mushrooms that you buy at a grocery store are produced in Pennsylvania, in Kent Square, I believe. Kent. Kennett Square. Yep. Really? Mm hmm. I didn't know that. But beyond that, just you can go into any patch of woods, frankly, probably even in your backyard yeah. in Pennsylvania and find edible mushrooms. So that starts in the summer and then it really peaks like in the fall, late summer, early fall. So I've been foraging for myatake mushrooms for hen. Well, they're also called hen of the woods. Chicken of, Chicken the, woods. of the woods, yeah, yes. those are the They're only so ones. Great. Those are the only ones I know of, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I'll 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 get those like yeah I'll get those I feel like it during turkey season and no. the, nope. not turkey season those nope. morels okay no yeah but I don't, I've never found any morels actually so okay maybe it's. During the summer, is that when chicken in the woods are good? Chick- they, late they summer. Late summer? Okay. Late summer. Yeah. Or maybe it was so on cool. checking trail like September or something. Yeah. When I get them, I'll cut them off the trees or the stumps that I find yes. them on and I'll cook them and they are amazing. Yes. Especially when they're young and still have some moisture to them. Yep. Oh my God. One of the best. I, I always actually take a little like like a Walmart bag or something with yeah. me when I'm in the woods because mm-hmm. I just like in case I run across those. And that's literally all I know about mushrooms is that. Yes. That's a good one to know because you really can't, is a mess, great place you can't mess to start. it up too bad and mm-hmm. it, it always tastes good. Yeah. Yeah. There are not many lookalikes for chicken of the woods. And once you find one and properly identify it, mm-hmm. you'll be able to identify it without thinking twice. Yeah. So it, that's a really good one to start with. Yeah. What what other ones that you do you typically find? Chanterelles doing? are Fun. close to one of my favorites. And that's another like late summer. Pretty easy to identify. Yep. Really? 
they're great tasting. So chicken of the woods mushrooms grow typically on dead trees or dead like logs. Yeah. So they're either standing or horizontal. You'll find them on both. Um, sometimes you'll find just a single mushroom. Sometimes you'll find a whole bunch of them. And uh, chanterelles grow out of the ground, but they grow. And uh, again, I might fudge this for the people who are like real mycologists out there. Mycologists? My, mycologists. That's a pretty nice word. I've never heard of that. Really? Like, we're, we're simple folk over here. I'm almost positive. <laughs> wow. Maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> I'm not speaking <laughs> properly. No, you're No, a uh, mycologist. It's, it's, okay. yeah, it's someone who studies you. mushrooms. Uh, All right. Well, we'll go with that. Yeah. Um, People who truly know what they're talking about when they're talking about mushrooms. Uh, but chanterelles grow like in synergy with root systems. So a chanterelle mushroom is not a mushroom that you could find in a store, for example. Like you can't cultivate it commercially yeah. to sell it in a grocery store. It can only be foraged. Um, and that makes it really special. And in, it's mostly because of the way that it's somehow synergistic with these root structures of super old, like elm trees, for example, ash trees. I'm not sure exactly which tree in particular. Some sycamore. But we found a bunch of chanterelles and they're just so wonderful. Um, what, black trumpets what are... They wait, what do, what do chanterelles look like? Chanterelles look like... Bright orange, a little, like chicken. Uh, no, they don't look like chicken. No, 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 the color. The color, yes. So they're orange, similar yeah. to Chicken of the Woods. Yep. Uh, but they grow out of the ground and they have this beautiful sort of cupped flower shape. So um, if you just like l glanced quickly at them, you might actually think it was an orange flower, maybe like a sort of like tiger lily-esque like color. <laughs> um. But yeah, they, they just grow as individual mushrooms. But typically, once you find one, you'll find a lot. Interesting. Mm -hmm. They're fantastic. Okay. And what, so what would you consider the taste of them to be like if you, if you could compare it to something? Definitely the classic umami mushroom flavor. Okay. But. Hmm. Just good, man. You can, just, chicken, uh, you can chicken fry them. You can throw them in a pan with some butter and olive oil and just eat them straight up like that they're they're just kind of meat it's yeah. just like a they've got a nice a flesh to them not quite as pleasant fleshy flavor. as chicken of the woods i yeah. find chicken of the woods to be quite firm um rigid almost yeah and chanterelles are a little more delicate but they are super versatile where they will hold up in a stew but they'll also hold up um you know just with a quick sear gotcha a cast iron Oh, that's, that sounds good. So yeah. the coolest thing is like we, the area where we mushroom hunt, we pick huckleberries, we deer hunt, yeah, bear hunt, it's all in the same spot and yeah. seasonally it changes, but that's where we collect and shoot and harvest food. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's cool. It's incredible. It's really cool. And you can put trail cameras on it and see what's going through, what's growing, even when we're you know, a thousand miles away. Yeah, that is crazy. And it's because, so, and, and yeah, I guess I should have prefaced this. What I think we might have talked about a little bit, but like where, where you guys are at here is in the middle of the PA Wilds, just beautiful, awesome, just beautiful big woods country, yes. like classic. Anything that I've ever talked about in this podcast from mm -hmm. big woods hunting, like this is the, it has everything. I Quintessential guess, right? Eastern Big Woods mountain hunting. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a beautiful area, and that's that's cool that that you do the the foraging part of that too. And like I I know, and I've talked about it on here before too. But like I I am really trying to just learn more about just the species of trees and plants. And yeah, I have this little app. It's called Picture This. That you that's take cool. you take pictures of. Literally, the leaves or the bark, and they'll tell you what it is. Genius. Yes. And uh, it Genius. is, isn't it? And it identifies, and it's pretty accurate. I and mean, when you don't have service, it doesn't work. But, like, it, it just, I don't know. I just want to continue to learn. Like, I'll see, okay, this is being chewed on the ground by the deer. It's being dug. What, what is this? Why yeah. do they like this? And, and it's it's a pretty cool Love that. app to check out. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah. Um, I started foraging for mushrooms probably 
two years ago, but not very seriously, just a couple mushrooms here and there. And I don't know what got into me this year, but it was, I was on a mission to learn more. And the one day I went out, this was probably in September. And my goal was to collect every specimen of mushroom that I could find, all the different species, put them in a bag, bring them home, and then try and identify them. And I probably picked 14 different mushrooms, all different types. Even if I was like, oh no, this looks terribly poisonous. I still want to pick it and see if I can identify it. And out of the 14, I was able to positively identify one. It, it, <laughs> there, it's hard. It's not a game. It's definitely not a game. And it's not, not a game. A game. Yeah, yeah, there were some that I thought I was maybe close and that like maybe I think was right, but I couldn't get a positive ID on it, so I didn't mess with it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the disclaimer, one, you should not know if you're going to put it in your mouth. Yes, full yeah. disclaimer, no this is not medical advice. <laughs> yeah, you have to know <laughs> Don't what listen you're doing. To this. Um, but it's not that hard. Buy a book, go online, or, you know, ask somebody. They're actually the mushroom I will, community. I actually, plug, will like they'll bring people. They host yes. events. Like, really? Like, it's oh a yeah, pretty big community. Hundred percent. I will plug this guy's channel. Um, his name's Adam. Learn your land. Yes, and his use, his YouTube channel is called Learn Your Land. And you should actually look this up Goofy. if you're thinking yeah. about keeping an eye out for mushrooms this next season. Um, he's actually in Pennsylvania as yeah, well. Yeah, Western PA. Yeah. Real. So his information is extremely applicable to where we're at. Yeah. But he gives just an incredible, he's like, good. how to ID different mushrooms. And I learned a lot of stuff from... So we've been yeah. talking about mushrooms for like Yeah, sorry. I know. <laughs> no, no. I that, love no, I, I, I'm interested in it. Yeah. Okay, so what else? We've been Okay, fishing, so mushrooms were... Mushroom that, that was a big epiphany for <laughs> yeah. me. Like, my love of foraging. <laughs> and I was just eating it all Yeah, up. It was awesome. It was great. Um, and then it, it was hunting season. So we were in Wyoming. Okay. So in Wyoming, you can draw a sort of Wyoming's general elk tag after you have about three points. So if you're someone out there thinking about hunting elk in Wyoming and you're not a resident there, expect to need about three points before you can hunt there. Um, I drew that general tag this year. And we went on an elk hunt um, in Western Wyoming on horseback, which was wow. So I'm a horse girl. <laughs> Dude, it was wild. Like I grew up riding horses, showing horses. You don't seem crazy enough to be a horse girl. Oh, I was a horse girl. <laughs> <laughs> She's good. I was a horse girl um, from the age of probably five until middle school. Because then in middle school, I realized that I wanted to hang out with my girlfriends and that boys were cute. And then that's all we did was like, oh, I want to hang out with my friends and like go chase boys and not ride horses anymore. Yeah. Um which now looking back, I regret that I didn't stick with it, but I'll find my way back into it. But anyways, it, this hunt was on horseback and um, the first morning we rode in, you know, on horses to our base camp. And the first morning we wake up at probably 3.30, we're on horses by 4 a.m. And we start to caravan up the mountain in the dark <laughs> and no Nick, headlamps <laughs> no headlamps uh-uh. well we had headlamps like, on but the guys were like turn them off the yeah. horses see better in the dark I'm like yeah, what yeah <laughs> no they don't i'm yeah. gonna die <laughs> so uh, yeah how did you feel because you hadn't had much experience on horses that was either. maybe the second second or third time i'd ever been on a horse pitch black freezing cold we were actually going downhill yeah. down like shale like well, it was down and up yeah Steep, steep, intimidating. Yeah. But like exhilarating. It was awesome. Once I got comfortable on the horse and I knew the horse wasn't going to like. Once you trusted it. Yeah. It wasn't going to freak out on me. I was like, wow, I can let go. This is amazing. There was a point on that trek up the mountain. We were, we had to go off trail in order to avoid some downfall. There were some trees that fell over the trail. So we were trying to sort of portage around it. And my horse, uh, his front hoof got stuck uh, like on a log and he fell. And I was able to kind of jump off him as he fell. But for anyone who has, you know, like been on horses or knows horses in the backcountry, if a horse 
like sprains their ankle in the backcountry and they can't walk themselves out, that's the end of that horse. And I, of course, immediately thought the worst and was like, where I'm going to have to watch someone put this horse down right now. Like this is, that's it. This horse is done. Um, and the guides spent some time clearing out limbs around where the horse had fallen and got him back up. And then he was all right. <laughs> we kept trucking. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't twist anything, it but was... it was really intense. Because also at this point, it was maybe 5 a.m., still pitch black. Horse fell. Woo, what do we do? What, first day? First day. First, first morning. morning. Yeah, first morning. Yeah, so first I morning. Like, I'm like leading the pack because my horse <laughs> knows what to do. Yeah. I had yeah. no she idea She was a beast. Was. She was awesome. I forget her name. Doesn't matter. Magic or something. Something. She was great. Simple <laughs> like that. Yeah, she was awesome. So she's like leading the pack. I'm like, what am I doing right now, dude? Yeah. Like if a deer runs out or a bear runs out and she gets spooked. I'm toast because I'm just holding on. I don't know how to get off the damn thing. I'm yeah. just holding on. She's going to ride me to freaking Idaho. <laughs> like, I have no idea what I'm doing. But it was, by like day three or so, I trusted the horse and it was really, really cool, man. It was really cool. Yeah. But dude, riding a horse is exhausting. Yeah. It's not just like, okay, throw your weight on it and you can get up that hill. Uh uh-uh. uh. There's a lot of like pressure placement. Dude, my knees, my hips, like my, the bottom part of my, pelvis and my pubic bone wow yeah i was so sore that i could barely sleep see i've never i've never really ridden horses like that other than when i was like a kid and going like riding around a little yeah little arena or whatever mm-hmm. they're called right like yeah. at a fair yeah. yeah yeah like i've never i've never done that before and i could imagine it would be it was so cool yeah, that would be awesome. And I've been so I've been on one hunt where we used horses, and I was with Joe, your buddy Joe oh. Sanjamino, mm-hmm. and or you guys' friend Joey and and uh, and Gabe Lynn, and and they because they had invited me on this hunt, and they had brought horses. I think it were Gabe's horses from PA mm-hmm. out to Colorado, Whoa. and we went back in, and but we didn't ride them, mm-hmm. so they just carried our Pack gear. Animals. Yeah, and we just walked next to them, and it was it was hilarious because like. Gabe's like, you feel, look uncomfortable around these horses. I'm like, I just don't. They're so damn big. Yeah, they're so big, and like, I just don't know. And you know, at, and at the time, like, I was, I was single, and I was talking to this horse girl, and I was like, <laughs> I need to impress her. So, like, you need yes. to get a picture of me, like, petting this horse. <laughs> Snapchat. Know? Yeah, I was like, I need a picture, like, petting this horse, and like, <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. But uh, it, it, it was, it was, it was crazy to see, you know, them work, and then you know, you have to feed them so much, and you gotta, mm-hmm. and you gotta be next to water, and all it. Mm-hmm. It definitely adds another element to the hunt when you when you yeah. have them around. So yeah. we did that. That was a big big experience for me i wasn't hunting i was just filming mm-hmm. but the horse riding this that was like that wasn't trail riding that was like intense up and down shale definitely way off trail jump and deadfall learned how to ride a horse while it was trotting all that stuff it was really cool and i got comfortable but the hunt itself was uh it was good it was really slow up until about the last day or two we were there too early. A little bit. Too. It was yeah. hot and dry. Was it the beginning of September then? Oh, yeah. Or? Uh, it mm-hmm. was like middle beginning. Okay. No, beginning. The last day, I think, was like maybe the start of the rut. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So we ended up getting into bulls, but uh, it was tough. Yeah, it was tough. Even with guides and everything, it was tough. We worked our asses off. Yeah. The guides worked their asses off. It was tough. But we ended up getting a... We had a pretty good opportunity on a bull, and he kind of like came out of a came out of a draw. We weren't really we were thinking he was going to come up this different trail. He came up another trail and ended up getting busted. But he busted me as I drew my bow. He was really? so uh, damn big. It his was, face was behind this like Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Yeah, <laughs> and I but thought we I stuck. had a chance. Like, we couldn't move. We were stuck. And I drew my bow. And of course, you know, here's the branch. Here's Eyeball. one Charlie Brown. Here's the <laughs> yeah. other. His eye was right there uh-huh. yeah. looking at me. And he got me. Dude, when I'm saying big, I mean like, And then I, whoa. yeah. <laughs> like I was trembling. It yeah. was so cool. It was really cool. It was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So is that, um, is that hunt on your YouTube channel yet? It is, yeah. It is. Yes. It that is. full okay. hunt. I believe there are four videos of that hunt. We hunted five or six days. Okay. Six days, I believe. Mm-hmm. So, and I edited a, 
a terrible job on the introduction and asking you this stuff. I I assume just because I've had you on here before, but give talk a little it's bit. It's been a while. Your- you probably actually you definitely have so many new yeah. listeners from the first <laughs> I know. time so I in 2018. <laughs> so yeah, t- t- say so a little bit about it. So I'm Allie DeAndrea. Yeah. So I have a YouTube channel called Outdoors Alley, and that's where I share my adventures in the outdoors. And I started hunting as a young adult, so I didn't grow up around this stuff. So a lot of what I share truly is my experience just into this world and always learning. I think at this point, I mean, I'm maybe eight years in at this point, so I I don't necessarily consider myself a you know, a newbie anymore, but constantly learning Mm -hmm. and constantly challenging myself and always sharing that because learning how to hunt is difficult and learning how to even frankly enjoy the outdoors can be difficult for people that didn't grow up around it. So I try and help people sort of navigate that and, um, so yeah, so that's YouTube. I'm also on Instagram and the funny world of TikTok as well. And if you're on TikTok, you're probably weird as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Are you, Maybe you're just young. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm uh, on TikTok, so is it, is it, it is what it is. How is that? How do you, I guess, I don't know. I tried TikTok for like a minute. Yeah. Okay. Like, I didn't give it its whole thing. And I got every video taken Honestly, down. Honestly, yeah. uh, Censored. Yes. And yes. I was like, all right, I need, I need a different strategy. And I so never, I will I never say, actually, so like all jokes aside, I do think TikTok is an incredible platform. Yeah. I love TikTok. <laughs> and I think it's because the way that they have mastered their algorithm to really show you content that you want to see I feel like when people first downloaded it, they saw a lot of like teenagers dancing. And while that is a side of TikTok at this point now, um, I mean, it's years old at this point. And the type of people and content creators that are on there is so diversified. And they do, TikTok does a really good job of showing you the type of content that you interact with, showing you the stuff that you want to see. And people who are creating content on there are really clever and really funny and really educational. And um, it's, a, in my opinion, like one of my favorite platforms. I was about to say my favorite. It's not my favorite, but it's one of my favorite. And if I really you are enjoy creating it. hunting content, it yeah. is difficult to navigate. Absolutely. And I will say- And you say, have to be very creative and so, give yourself credit. You have to be very creative yes. and crafty. With yes. the way that you do that for it not to be removed, mm-hmm. not to be flagged, not to be mm-hmm. shunned, privatized, Similarly, though, whatever. Similarly, though, for a lot of platforms now as well, it's yeah, true. It's but becoming TikTok especially is TikTok very sensitive. Especially, yes. very sensitive. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I had I had shared like the video of me dragging my buck last year across mm-hmm. the creek. Nah. No, God, dude, a well, euro amount. We posted a euro amount thing. Or yep. You posted a euro amount thing. Mm-hmm. Just a euro amount. I edited a video Bam, together. Gone. Me Took a long time to edit. Euro amount last year. Yeah done off well i've been banned on there too so they banned me for a couple of days yeah and when they did that to to me okay so like i said i didn't give it much time but like i got banned and all this stuff and then i'd like i'd put a video on there and it went seven days with zero views (laughs) (laughs) i know somebody watched that shit yeah (laughs) and then like and then they were reviewing it. i watched it 12 it's like (laughs) it's it was it was was like all right they don't they don't like my stuff i I guess but I, i didn't realize that like people are doing like more educational stuff oh my god on there, dude like, if you so edit like, like if you start a video portion of this and then you edit together just clips of you know the yeah. most exciting portion that in itself is perfect content for tiktok interesting yeah it's it's if you're sleeping on tiktok like you're late you're late you're sleeping I'm, on I'm it. I'm late, yeah. Late. It's a really <laughs> good opportunity and But it's um, never too late. Oh no, it's never too so late. Do it. Frankly, it's still it's not too late to start an Instagram page. It's not too late to start a YouTube yeah. channel. No, no, like no. if you have the desire to share whatever it is that you love, it's not too late at all. Yeah, and I I really enjoyed like the stuff that you put out from the standpoint of like as you've sh- like I've followed you for a while and I've known you for a while, but seeing you grow, like you've shared like all the you know, the 
the dumb things that have happened. You've showed all the good things that have happened. You've showed all the learning in between. I think that's where, that's obviously why you've been successful with it because people can relate to it. It's not just like the highlight reel. It's the whole, yeah, the whole, the whole deal thing. that people can relate to. Especially on YouTube. I feel like it's so much easier to share everything on YouTube mm-hmm. because if someone's following along on YouTube, it's like they can immerse themselves in that type of video content where they're there with me and I'm there with them. Like when I'm talking to the camera, I'm talking to them. An you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Versus um, Instagram can be difficult because it is so inherently surface level in a photo in an image and you can try and express things and connect with people through your nobody reads it anyways but it's difficult it's scroll 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 now instagram is highly favoring video content i think because they see the success of other platforms like youtube and tiktok Mm -hmm. and i think there is more opportunity to connect with people in a deeper way through there. So I'm excited about that. And I've been having more fun on Instagram recently, I think because of that. And the page is growing. Yeah. Today, it hasn't grown in years. And today, she hit 130K. Not that it hasn't grown in years. It has grown in years. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. It's, it's the, Not really. So the growth rate, this is actually interesting. So the growth rate, the first probably two years of being on Instagram was pretty exponential feeling. And then it hit a certain point where they changed the, I don't want to, I'm not blaming it on the algorithm because it's not the algorithm, but they changed things. Like things went from chronological to this new form. And I feel like when that change started to happen, growth was still happening, but it was slower. And especially over the past two years, Growth has slowed. It, it's not that it hasn't grown. <laughs> I remember it <laughs> had it had regressed at a certain yeah, point. Yeah. Like you were losing more followers and you were gaining at a certain point. Yeah. And like this sounds so ridiculous to even talk about like follower con- or follower count, blah, 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 it's blah. It's interesting. Though. It is interesting and it's like, it's our job. So I pay attention to it. But there's pretty significant growth right now and it is due to video content. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Absolutely. It is due to reels and video content mm-hmm. because they, I don't know if their objective is to compete with YouTube and TikTok. I think they're, yeah, I think they're Seems probably like trying it. Oh, 100%. Yeah, they're definitely doing that. So they're like, they're showing that stuff. They're more. rewarding. Yes. They're rewarding people video that are content. putting that stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I cool. enjoy that more. So it's like a perfect it fits your, storm. It fits your style. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I guess to your point, in the past, we may have grown. 2,000 followers in two months or three months. And now it's 2,000 followers in a week. Yeah, that's approximately. Really? Was it even that high? In two months or three months? I feel, like there yeah. was a, I feel like there was a year, maybe two, where it was like teetering, like basically level. Yeah. I don't I mean, know. Right know. now, it's good. So yeah. we're happy. <laughs> we're happy. Now. Yeah, we're happy. Yeah, it is interesting though. Yeah, that it's is. It's definitely a Dude, they weird change. thing to pay attention to. They change and you have to notice it and change with it. Yeah, yeah. But if you're a content creator, it's important. Yeah, no, it definitely it, it definitely is and like it's I mean, obviously that's that's your job and mm-hmm. you know, that's part of my job like to, to see those things and adapt to it and and like but not not changing your um I don't want to say style or like your, your what voice. you're about. Yeah, your mm-hmm. voice and what you're about. Just figuring out how to how to present it. Yes. Is is what is exactly what you're saying. Absolutely. Agreed. Yeah. Hundred percent. Agreed. Yeah, you gotta stay true to what you're doing. Like you're not just like all of a sudden getting on TikTok and all of a sudden you're like totally. instead of instead of being I'm a, a vegan Allie now. The, no, yeah, <laughs> Allie the Hunter. I'm a, well, Abby was like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> oh my god, she's like, been loving dear dog. meat. Yeah. She yeah. is a venison she just fiend. One eye and said, yeah, uh-uh. she's like, "Wait, what? Vegan?" <laughs> 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 yeah, you're not gonna be a vegan, or you're gonna change to you know. All of a sudden, you're doing ridiculous dances or something. You know, you're not doing those yet. Not yet. 
Not yet. <laughs> I no. do, but we don't post them. Yeah. <laughs> Nick does them on his private page. It's under like some weird handle that we can't talk no, about. No, you'll never find that. You know, I've always thought about starting Nick a fart page because he farts so much. Dude, that's and. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I wasn't going there. I, I was just going I mean, from the funniness I of fart a lot, but no, we're not putting that out there. Uh-uh. Yeah. Well, it's out there now, so it's out there now. Just people are going to start commenting and being like, well, "Where's the Nick fart?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, I would literally, I'd move, I'd go to this country. Like, <laughs> I do not want those weirdos seeking me out. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> yeah you're but just in general like the the content creation side it's been it's been interesting because i feel like um you, i don't know i feel like you were one of the first people that i've seen like actually make you know a career out of it and make mm-hmm. you know a job out of it and grow and adapt and see how that space is is growing i think it's awesome that there's an ability for that now to yeah. to do that and i think it helps out so many people and especially like with your audience with people that are you know newer to it and wanting to get into it audience. and and so so helpful from that standpoint there are a lot of mess i am terrible at responding to dms just because it's like flooded and it's difficult to manage um but email is something that is easier to manage. And we've had totally emails agree. from people that are just so heartfelt, so like that make me feel like I'm really making a difference in these people li- these people's lives. Yeah. Whether it's a you know, a dad saying my daughter loves your channel and like my daughter's going to go on her first hunting trip next year because of you or it's a guy who's just learning how to hunt and is figuring it out or it's a girl in college who realized that she hates her major and she doesn't want to work in finance anymore and she wants to find a way to work in the outdoor industry or whatever it is yeah there's a lot of different ways that it affects people um but yeah that's I think that's just the, and I, I'm sure that you've had similar experiences because especially with the type of content that you're creating, it has such a focus on education and that just inherently touches people. Like even you can think about when you were in grade school, like who is your favorite teacher from grade school? Yeah. They made an impact on you. Oh, hundred percent. You know, like the power of education and learning um, and to be able to connect with someone through that is really incredible. So that's my favorite part about the whole thing. It does. Sometimes I feel silly that we make our living posting on the internet, you know, and I think that my grandparents, you know, didn't, you know, don't understand it, didn't understand it, yeah. um, can't understand it, but the yeah i think well, the, it's, it's not silly it's just modern it's, no yeah it's the just, impact it's just, is like yeah it's just you can feel it but it's it's hilarious like my uh my my grandma and grandpa they'll be like like yeah like we told we told so-and-so to to, to listen to your uh your ipod your radio <laughs> your show iPod. and i'm like podcast yeah. but yeah your yeah. ipod and i'm, I'm yes. just like laughing yeah. and uh like Howard Pap Pap would like call it a show. Howard yeah. Stern was the last. Like I'm watching like, your show. Yeah. Audio piece that they ever listened to. Yeah. Yeah. It, I think it, Howard Stern's still going. He is, but. Yeah, he's figured it out. He might be barely hanging on. <laughs> I don't know. But no, it, it is just, it is funny to, or not funny, but it's just, it's incredible to kind of see how that's transitioned. And uh, that's just the way things are now. And like for me, I love learning and that's Mm -hmm. why i started the podcast and now i mean something i didn't realize until after i'd started this is i love education like Mm -hmm. being able to educate people on on things that either i've learned or that i've experienced and being able to do that and that's what we were talking before we started recording here and i was like that's just like that's my focus like i love that and i like getting those messages and those emails of like this has helped me this is like that is 
I don't know. That just drives me to want yes. to do more and help with it. So it's pretty cool. Definitely. I think it's admirable and it takes a lot of balls to do that. It's not easy. It's really not easy to put yourself in oh, the front of the, he, in the, front of the classroom. all of the nasty comments. <laughs> to put yourself in the front of the classroom yeah. and be like, listen, I don't know everything, but I'm going to teach you what I know. Yeah. You get ridiculed. You get poked at. You get made fun of. But, you know, the couple students that are actually there listening really paying attention it makes a big difference that's where yeah if you so how how do you deal with nasty comments or anything does it bother you at all there i I mean absolutely there's been times where it's bothered me i'm not gonna pretend like it hasn't but overall i think that there's definitely space to listen a little bit to that because i think there is some truth in things right like there's truth in humor that's why it's funny. And so I think that if there's, you know, hurtful comments, mean comments, mean things, there is, you know, like, I definitely take a look at myself and think like, okay, like, is there truth in this? Um, And only let that, you know, exist for a second. And then, yeah, and then and being like, <laughs> like okay, that's it. you know, looking at it, like, is this something or is this ridiculous? But it's it? for improvement for myself. And at the end of the day, that's, I think, the best way to look at it. It's just like, can you look at it from a third person perspective? You know, I'm not looking at it from like me personally. Yeah. Imagine that I'm, you know, I'm, some, I'm someone, I'm something else looking at this. What can I gain from this? Can I, whatever. And also, a lot of it's not that deep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but just like in general, that idea of, you know, use it to make you stronger. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's it. Yeah. That's, I, I, I want, you know, someone with the size of your platform and, and everything of just wondering how you kind of, you know, yeah. dealt with some of. I think a lot of the time it's, um, again, not that deep, but also. Yeah, like and you if can, there's enough of it, like, okay, hey, listen to this. Like, what, what, what are you know? What's there to take away from this? And that's all. Yeah, no, that's that's it's interesting, but I, I think, I mean, at least it doesn't look like it affects you, and it's from the sounds of it, it doesn't really. So oh, we've been doing so good. That's good, and in like a, I think that the more time that goes on. Just the better that I get at expressing myself, the better that I get at, frankly, like hunting, the better that I get at cooking, the better that I get at identifying things that I really love and that I really want to share. And I just think through that process, um, it just, I keep growing and it keeps getting better. And And the more that I'm able to share with people. Accepting and identifying like, what you're not good at, but you're still willing to share it and show the the learning experience, the growing experience. That's the stuff that's really hard to do, but that's the stuff that really connects. Yeah. And that's the stuff that elicits, is that the right word? Ridicule. Like people, Oh, sure. that's the stuff of that course. people are like, Absolutely. oh man, you're an idiot. I'm going to keep it PG. You're an idiot. Blank, 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 blah, blah, blah. But are you doing it? No, you're not because you're too scared. Yeah. You don't want to try anything new. It sucks to suck at something. Yeah. And but then you're just gonna be stuck in your same spot, dude. Yeah, that's it. And Have fun. that can be applied to so many different things. Like when you go you know, you try something new or like mm. like, you know, the first time I go on a Western hunt or even now, I mean like I str- I'm not I'm not what you know, the 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 guys and girls that have been doing it for a long time. Like I'm still learning and everybody's yeah. everybody is, but like you're at a different phase. But like the first time I did anything suck at it and it feels shitty yeah but like showing that what i've found is like showing that is is relatable to and like and being able to it's real to you know that's the same thing with like this year when i had um it ended okay but it was kind of a uh left a bad taste in my mouth with when i shot my buck in pennsylvania and i i hit him back and i had to wait overnight and had just it, it took a while essentially to be able to find them, not till the, till the next day and, and the meat ended up being spoiled. And that was really hard for me personally to deal with that. And then I was like, okay, 
but that's that's what happened. That's what happened. And You're I sh- and I shared it and went it's went not through it lie. and it's just like yeah and and I I I honestly didn't get much negative feedback. It was more positive of like wow, I appreciate that you would share something like that. Yeah. Didn't sure. You know, didn't hi- didn't hide it from any and act like you're this, you know, because I'm not. I'm not anything special. It's just that's that's what happened. I I feel very proficient with my bow and everything, and I made a mistake, and I need to learn from that. And now I'm like, okay, this is you know what happened, and and I actually shared that before that I had missed him at 14 yards, completely bl- blind out, missed him, made the most rookie mistake you could ever make, and like I I literally was like you are an idiot and I, I was called that i was like whatever it's true i was yeah. <laughs> so really? four, 14 yards yeah i didn't i didn't bend man i didn't bend <laughs> the ways and uh Did you shoot over him? i shot under him at 14 you shot under him yeah right under his armpit That's i was taking on his heart and you didn't... almost hit yourself in the boot yeah <laughs> <laughs> now now i'm getting it from over here you know no that's cool man i i actually listened to that podcast so yeah I you already knew and you were just trying to you yeah. were just trying to just, I'm just dig yeah. that dig it a little deeper. And just but no it. i appreciated when you said that that was the with the go wild what's his name uh brad was that him yeah with brad's pocket yeah yep you and brad talked about that and i was like damn that that really sucks yeah but i appreciate that you were honest because you could you could have just done the trophy shot and been over with you got the hundred positive comments and whatever you go. To yeah, and I go pat night. myself on yeah, the back. Yeah, a bit happy that night, but really, you know, you've got a little secret. Yep. Yeah. And and I don't you're like, like, damn, dude, let me tell you about what happened. This sucks. And Here's anybody how we can fix it. And anybody more. Blah blah blah. Anybody knows me knows like I'm a terrible liar. So like I can't. I can't. Sh- my face doesn't show it. Yeah. Like I just. I'm like for me. I just get everything out. Well, there the point and, is, if you're trying to be a positive influence, you don't need to hide. Yeah. The the bad stuff that does happen sometimes. True. Yeah. And like for me, I started sharing things on Instagram and on YouTube within my first year of, well, within the first two years of hunting. So like I was completely, a, a complete newbie, I knew nothing, but was still sharing like what it was like to get into it. And I think, yeah, just with that, that makes you an easy target. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. That's all right. Abby's not happy about us talking Abby, about this stuff. Yeah. She doesn't oh. like lights. Like if there's a light reflecting like on the headlamp. window, she thinks there's she, a headlamp. Yeah. Oh, she thinks okay. somebody's coming out of the woods. Mm. Okay. She's got her uh, antler uh, in her mouth uh, now. So she I know. She's, she's okay. She's a happy girl. <laughs> Abby got her first pheasant this year. She did. Oh my god, that she was cried. I think the proudest moment <laughs> that I had this entire year was <laughs> Abby getting her first pheasant. She had flushed a couple and I missed them. And then finally, um she flushed a bird and I dropped it and we went up to it. Or, you know, it was like trying to find it. I don't know if Nick found it first or if Abby found it first. So they found it simultaneously. But she picked the bird up and was walking around with it. And I cried because I was so proud so of Abby's her. So a, Abby's a three-year-old white lab. She's not trained to hunt whatsoever. She's not a hunting dog. We've, uh, we've taken her to the pheasant fields three times. Once each year. This was her third time, and she knows what she's doing now. Like, and, she's that yeah, smart. And she flushed multiple birds. Yes, and she, she's on them. Like, she knows mm-hmm. exactly what is going on. Do you have anything you'd want to say, Abby? She's right here next to me. Anything? <laughs> <laughs> I hope that picked up. The yeah, description. I think it did. <laughs> that's funny. Um, no, that's that's cool. And And, you know, speaking of, like, you know, like learning something, you know, relatively new and everything. You since since I've met you guys, you know, you've been coming up to this camp and you started spending more time up here and getting into hunting the big woods. Yes. And just I, I'd love to hear just kind of your perspective of what was that was that I mean, are you relatively new to it or have you been coming up here? Because this is a family camp, right? Yes. Yes, this is my family camp. So um we've owned the place for like five years now. But I've been coming up here for probably five years before that with my uncle and some guys who introduced us to the place who really like taught me how to hunt. 
and uh yeah it just like turned me on to a a wild world of vast open hardwoods yeah with some thickets and some mountain laurel yeah. and some nasty stuff involved it's, but yeah it's not easy to learn you can get lost and from coming from the perspective of a guy who only hunted suburbs in Pittsburgh where you you might have a 44 acre patch where you know there's some deer over here you win bump it you drive it whatever and you fill your doe tags and that's exciting hunting man i love that stuff that's cool that's a great way to get meat but you come up here and you're like damn this is like it might as well be montana might as well be idaho i have no idea where the hell i am i get a compass and they say go east there's no direction <laughs> like there's no cell phone service there's no nothing go east if you hit the river you went too far i'm like okay this is exciting. You make sure you got a lighter, right? Yeah, I got a lighter. Okay, let's go. Let's do it. And that's what introduced me to the big woods hunting. And that was always only bear hunting. We never even deer hunted up here. It was just bear. Okay. Go find yourself a bear. It's going to be a big party, blah, blah, blah. It's so much fun. And it was that much fun. It was that much fun that our family wanted to invest in a camp up here. And we've made it like a significant portion of our lives. Deer hunting, pheasant hunting, squirrel hunting mushroom picking everyone it's a group thing there trout are, fishing everything there are people here yeah. every weekend in the fall we introduce every year this. we re, we introduce people up here who have never even hunted the suburbs at home and they've started learning up here in the big woods and that's really fun to watch yeah like it's rewarding it's fun it's a great way to connect with people and uh yeah, I feel like they just have a they have a big head start because we've spent a lot of time bumming around, not seeing anything, not doing yeah. a whole lot, not filling any yeah. tags, and uh, yeah, it's it's just been a really good experience. It's it's an amazing area. I remember the first year. I think the this um, house was purchased in enclosed in November, and we didn't kill anything that first year. It, that was just kind of a wash. And then the second year, which I kind of considered the first year, I shot a buck with a rifle out of a tree stand. Um, but the reason why I chose to hung the, hang the stand there was because of that first season. That was kind of a wash. Um, I was sitting on the ground and... And really, I was just in a bunch, like kind of open hardwoods, really. I had no clue. It was just like, you know, seeing some poop, seeing some tracks. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm just going to sit here. This yeah. looks good. No idea. And always at last light, there were these like two or three doe that, were, that would always walk towards me. And my wind always just happened to be right like in this particular spot. And so I kept moving like a little bit closer and a little bit closer to where these deer were coming from. And it turns out there was a laurel edge. And I found this spot where these deer would come out of the laurel every night, nearly every night. And that next year... And like the, so the, in the open hardwood you're talking about is our oak trees. So they oh, have yes. acorns. Like you can, yes. you can yeah. shoot 300 yards open, yeah. open. And I've walked back there with you, so I can attest it. Oh, as and open that goes for miles in every direction. Yes. Yep. And you walk until you hit an edge. <laughs> yeah. It's like a good lesson in the big woods. We yeah. didn't know Find that. an edge. And I found that edge. And it was, I found it through observation, through just being out there sitting and sort of getting lucky to notice a pattern in the way that the deer were moving through. And then I hung a stand there with help. I didn't hang it by myself, but I chose the spot. And then I shot a buck there with a rifle. And now that is like one of my spots yeah. that I love and I cherish. And Money spot too. Mm -hmm. It's a great spot. Great spot. And um, since then, we've learned all of these different lessons about hunting in the big woods. Last year, I killed my first buck here with a bow out of a saddle. And then this year, now, it would be my third whitetail buck in this forest. Okay, yeah. With and, the saddle. Yeah, and you're... Uh... 
your buck last year is one of the biggest seven points I've ever seen in my life. Like that thing is so heavy, like just big bases, beer just cans, beer can, like just comes up, just gnarly looking. Dude, I'm telling you, the body but, on that thing. And that spot where I killed that deer control. was a special spot that was diff. <clears throat> excuse me, that was difficult to access. And it took me a while to figure out how to access that spot and finally figured it out. Um, And it was the third time that I sat there. First two times, crickets, absolutely nothing. Third time. This deer came in and I watched him make a scrape underneath an eastern hemlock. Oh, I love him. And then he walked right to my 40 yard mark that I I already had marked. That? You grunted. Oh, you were in the tree Why with her too. Not with me. He was in a tree a like little farther years. off. Okay. Yeah. But blind grunting was working for me that year. Yeah. I think it's because I listened to you and uh, Steve's podcast. Steve yeah. Kirk, and he was saying like he blind grunts every fifteen minutes. Or yeah. Minutes I yeah I I do I that like, all the time. I was like, dude, that is obnoxious. Like, why would you do that? And I started doing it, and I grunted in three like nice mature deer last year and i was like what the? this this works dude. I, yeah. it works it works like three big bucks i it think i grunted in a deer this year if you did that in pittsburgh uh-uh. they'll run the other the way the whole woods is gone everything is gone squirrels will leave actually i haven't like, hunted there in so long i don't actually know dude, if that's true or not there, like they do not like noise they do not like disturbance because they get hunted so damn hard interesting yeah it's I, crazy they don't care about wind they'll you can walk in upwind of them. They don't care. They smell humans all day. Noise, rattling, grunting. I swear they take off the next county. Interesting. It's crazy. No, I, I'm a big proponent of a blind grunt. My dad taught me that. He's like, because a lot of places when you get in some of these thicker areas, like, you can't see. So deer could be moving 80 yards away from you, you know, in the laurel or, or in a thicket of some sort, and you can't see them. So the only way to catch our attention, you know, during the rut is by grunting or or bleeding or whatever. And uh, yeah, so that's that's an interesting observation, you know, that you guys got to see that mm-hmm. that work and yeah. out for you. I have to take a bathroom break. I'm sorry. All right. Well, I'll just talk to Allie. That's okay. yeah. That's who I was looking to talk to you anyway. It so it hurts. Uh, <laughs> it's those natter days you're drinking. <laughs> yeah, he's got a mixture over there. He's got natter days. He's got. Uh, like buffalo trays buffalo trays yeah let's get the whole it's got a concoction bit. the kitchen sink <laughs> yeah but okay so g- going back to like learning up mm. here and everything and then because i think you guys started hunting out of the tethered saddles about the same time that i did yeah was it 2019 ish yeah, yeah. Yep. it was definitely 2019 yeah mm-hmm. yeah I, I actually yes you showed me the first, you guys showed me, do you remember that? Yes, we hooked you up in a tree out here. Yeah. Yeah, right you in, showed the, me like in the, the side yard. The first time, because I had heard about it, and I was like, ah, I don't know, this seems like a fad. Yes. And you guys got some. Was that maybe Memorial Day? That was Memorial yes, Day. Yes, because it was prior to the actual hunting season. That yeah. was, 2019 Memorial Day. Cause <laughs> yes, I, yeah, cause that I was spe- an epic year. That was a great party. <laughs> yeah, we spe- I spent the weekend here, and it was, it was nuts. But uh, yeah, that's when I first got introduced. I forgot that you showed me that. Yeah. And then, um, but yeah, you guys started utilizing and saddles. And interestingly, actually, it was Taylor Chamberlain that introduced us to saddle hunting. Okay. He was a very big proponent of it, and he just kept telling us how like beneficial it is for especially like this style um but just white tail in general it's a really good tool and so he was the one that hooked us on it and um i just think it's like the well i think there are a lot of different ways that you can hunt that are effective but for me personally it's the most fun that i can possibly have while archery hunting in the big woods because I'm so mobile and almost like tactical in terms of like, okay, I'm exploring a new spot. I sit in an area where I think the deer are going to move through. Damn it. They moved through a hundred yards over there. Next night, I can take my sticks down, go set them up elsewhere. Similarly to a climber. Um, but for me personally, I'm so comfortable in a saddle and feel safer in a saddle. 
and I feel like I can get into a lot of really comfortable shooting positions in a saddle. So the just like the mobility of it and the strategy that like I can deploy on my own. Um, and this year, I really made a point to try and perfect my climbing technique. Um, in years past, I've only been able to get maybe like 15, 13, 16 feet. I was going to say 13 to 15 feet off the ground Not super in high. years past. And this year, this is a spoiler alert, but um, I <laughs> wanted to test how high I could climb. So we filmed a YouTube video seeing how high I could climb uh, with four sticks and an aider, just like I normally do in the woods. And I got like over 18 feet. I think it was almost 19 feet. I think it was 19. We're at the base of my platform. So my head was, you know, way higher than that. But still, yeah, it was 19 feet. And I was super happy about that. I was, that was like a big accomplishment, I guess. Yeah, that's up definitely. there. Yeah, that's good. And, um, and not that I think getting super high in a tree is always necessary, but for certain Heck, spots. Heck, you're able to get higher than I am with four sticks. I, think, I got these short I got them long Honestly, yeah. I'll, I'll disagree with you. I think getting high is very necessary. I don't think in every circumstance not it's absolutely when necessary. When your cover's perfect, but where we hunt, when it's wide open like that, yeah, I think the, it's yeah. very yeah. necessary. Like that, mm-hmm. it's, it's a different story. You like, got to get up there. If mm-hmm. I'm, like Some of the areas that, that I hunt, like actually a lot of the hemlock areas I hunt, I can only go up. 10 or 12 feet because then the canopy gets so thick above yep. that that's the only place I can get to to be able to shoot under or if I'm in like uh, a clear like an old clear cut that's mm-hmm. grown up then I might only need that but I, I agree in the mature timber like you need to be able to get up. up get up higher I, up. I agree it especially if you're like if you're on the like a third of the way down the hill on a point you want to get up like you want to make sure that that bench that you're on or that bench that right next to you, when they come out, they're not eye level with you. You got to be above them. You got to be above the branches around you. You got to get up there. And yeah. 19 feet, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Pretty awesome. Speaking of, I don't know why it just reminded me of this. Speaking of like not knowing anything, just like starting out however many years ago, I used to legitimately try and hunt on the ground with my compound bow without any sort of blind whatsoever just straight up on the ground. And I don't know what I thought was going to happen. I thought that maybe a deer would walk out at 40 yards and that I would like magically be able to draw without them busting me. And I genuinely thought that it would work. And I sat on the ground like that multiple times, mostly on days that I was like, oh, like, and this was pre-saddle too, but mostly on days that I was just like, oh, like, I don't want to, you know, go in that tree stand. I'm going to go somewhere else. Or like, I just feel like, you know, sitting on the ground. (laughs) <laughs> and it never worked for well, me yeah. ever i always would get busted and it, would, it never kill, worked you killed a buck this year on the ground with yeah your it just it takes what? different techniques yeah. with it's it. hard God. yeah nope yeah. that was me you gotta wait for him to feed like in the wide it's open. gotta be wet and windy no have... i was doing it in like open hardwoods well that was also a long time ago i know that's what i'm saying yeah <laughs> But like it, I don't know why it just reminded me of like me, like turkey hunting set up, like oh, yes. even worse than that. No, <laughs> no, no cover, no decoy, no decoy, no <laughs> cover. No, I'm hidden when I turkey hunt. That's subjective. We're, we're pretty bad at that too. <laughs> we are yeah. not great turkey hunters. It's fun, but we stink. <laughs> we stink. Like stink. It. That's funny. Um, so uh, going a little bit further, this the buck that you had shot last year, we kind of started the story and then we uh, went off from it, but your seven point yeah. that you had shot, you were talking about the setup with that. Expl- yeah. Go back to what that looked like and how you kind of yeah. pick that out based off those observations that you learned. So um, my like, one of my best friends, her boyfriend at the time, Nick and I, um, and I don't remember if Abby was there. I think maybe their dog was there. We went on a hike in maybe April, May time frame with a bunch of trail cameras in our backpack and with the intention of just hiking around until we found something cool, hang a trail camera, hike around, you know, that kind of vibe. And uh, one of the trail cameras that we hung ended up producing a lot of great trial camera footage a lot of great bucks a lot of cool things um 
I think we had like a bobcat on camera, fishers, bears, bears, a fisher, black squirrels, <laughs> just to throw that in the mix too. They're yeah. super cool. We had all of these like cool animals on trail camera and um, this spot was just a nightmare to access. Because this was, you know, like an all day hike that we were just messing around. And then yeah. here, finally, when I was like, okay, how am I actually going to hunt this spot? It was just a nightmare. Um, so it took me some time to figure out exactly how to access it, but I figured it out and a way that was favorable for the wind, how it primarily moves and where I thought that the deer would be coming from. And I set up my sticks and a saddle. This was probably my favorite saddle setup ever, actually. And what was, trees? Well, no, it was a a tree. Um, and honestly, I don't remember what type of tree it was. It was a little bit slick. Um, um a birch. A birch. Which is yeah. Yeah. I don't even know. No, birch doesn't. It was, was a it birch. A birch? Yes. It was a big birch. Soft. Yeah. And slick. Mm-hmm. And it was tall. And there was an eastern hemlock like right behind it. And it just so happened that some of those branches of the eastern Ooh, hemlock like wrapped around. Yeah. Oh, it was that, magical. That's, how, that's a setup that I shot my buck out of this year. Same, she was but I was in a cherry with the hemlock. She was straight it. up invisible. Yeah, you can't, you can't get caught in that. Yeah. And um, I was just nestled in there so perfectly. And the one day, so I'd hunted there twice. It was the third time Nick and I went in together. He had a climber actually that, was that a day. Rule. Three, three sets. Three sets. Yeah. Yes. That was, yep. Yeah. So I did, I did learn some stuff. You, know? you did. And. <laughs> Good podcast, dude. Yeah. That maybe if we owe this to you. <laughs> yeah. And Steve Shirk. Yeah. Three sets. Three and set. um, so at Nick, I can't remember if it was your first grunt or multiple grunts. But honestly, the first time you grunted, I remember like, so we were separated. He was in a climber off a little ways. I was in my tree. Um, I kind of looked at him after the first grunt and was like, dude, don't do that. Like, I don't want you to do that right now. Like, I'm just, I'm cool. Like, it's, it's all good. You don't need to do that right now. I don't, want, I don't want, I don't, I don't want you to scare no, anything away, that, bro. Um, and work. it had to have been within like five to 10 minutes of one of his grunts. Um, this buck came in and he was probably close to 75 yards away when he made his scrape. But I just like lit up and felt this, I don't know, just, it was so cool watching this buck make a scrape, just peak of the rut. It just it, it, like boulders like just wild country and, yeah. and and i've walked that area that's steep it's rugged oh yeah it's got, it's got everything wild. yeah it's, it's a gnarly. wild area like you'll break a leg if you're not paying attention it's and it's i had so what i like especially with to my do... bitch ass ankles i'd be, <laughs> be rolling you down do have some, some soft ankles dude you got butter ankles uh, <laughs> I can't. Argue. Butter I can't. I can't. I don't know. <laughs> never, butter. I've never heard that one before. But yeah, butter ankles. They, they've been referred to as bitch ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to really, really condense my swear words here. So I, I, You're being well behaved. You have been with butter ankles. But anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to derail I your can't conversation. Remember. You're it's talking about um, yeah, where he made a scrape. Yeah. Okay, he made a scrape. It was incredible. Um, oh, so. I like to uh, pick out spots with my rangefinder, like every new tree that I'm set up in, typically like 40, 30, 20. And I sort of make these like pseudo rings. You know what I mean? Just like mentally, I have like yep. a ring. I'm like, okay, there's my 40 ring, my 30 yep. ring, my 20 ring. Um, and he stepped like he was walking right towards my 40 ring. And I drew, he had no idea I was there. Uh, I actually hollered to stop him because I. Hey. <laughs> one of those. <laughs> those. Normally, normally I feel like I'm like, hey. <laughs> Just like, like huh. um, I have found that I just like deer to be stopped. Yeah. I know that's some people like it, some people don't, but I like them to be stopped because I feel like I can execute my shot properly. I've tried to take shots when they're walking. I typically miss. Yeah. Um. 
so I hollered at him to stop and I took the shot and then he got all queasy and I watched him stumble around and he went maybe he kind of did a circle of like 20 yards and then back into 10 yards and then laid down and died oh that's awesome yeah it was was, intense yeah it was so cool and it was intense. um whenever she looked over i was facing the other way so like i was facing the west she was facing the east and i was like i don't want to turn around like kind of where east meets west at I, damn i got it damn damn you're good <laughs> but, uh, i was like i saw her draw on her bow and i didn't want to stick my big dumb white face like around the tree and the deer bust me so i was like just look this way yeah and listen and i heard the wow and I, the deer ran up behind a boulder, and she was like, it was a forky. And I was like, a forky? Like, it's got to be six point to be legal. Obviously, she knows that, but I was like, what kind of forky? Like, what kind of forky are you shooting? We walk up to it, and I was like, holy shit, it was a forky. Yeah. <laughs> it was forky on that side, but damn, it's huge. Yeah. For a forky. He yeah. had ticks. Obviously, he has brow tines and everything yeah, else, he but does, he's, he's got, got a giant point. fork, and that's what she said. It was a forky. Yep. And I was so confused. I was like, what the hell? Like a big, a mature, old forky. Yeah. I know. I would love to know how old he is. Um, I know I've said it like, three I don't times, know but the body weight, it was crazy. It we was just started insane. weighing our deer. Yeah, so we started now, recording Not everything. that year we didn't, but this year we did. So my deer field dressed was approximately 145. Yeah. Okay. Mine was 143. Yep. Which is interesting because Nick shot his deer, which is by far the giantest, <laughs> the largest deer that we have shot here. Um, but he was run down. He was just running in deer. That but yeah, deep, thick, dark, nasty yeah, stuff. So no food. That deer was late in the rut when they've been rutting for so long, running for so long, losing weight. Mm-hmm. Um, I would presumably like. I think it's reasonable to guess that both of those deer were the same age, very similar in age. Probably. But that deer weighed more than Way their deer. More. I would I would assume I mean from seeing the pictures of the body and and also the antlers on it, I would assume that those deer are six, seven years old. I'd agree. I the don't mass, know enough. Like, pretty close to the I math think, have on a, those antlers for the food sources that are here, there's and also there. the body size. Yeah, there's there's acorns, and there's not really a whole lot of brows from what I remember. Just mountain laurel. That if you get way down in there, there's some brows, but if the oaks don't produce, oh yeah, that's, and the beech almost never do, the hickory rarely do. But I did find it this year, and that's why I killed that buck and that bear. On the hickory. Hickory, oak, and beech all in the same damn spot. Oh, wow. That's like a trifecta. It was insane. It was totally insane. Yeah. So, yeah, this year you shot. Well, who who was the first one that, was it you that shot before his bear, or was he first with the bear? Uh, I shot the bear on November 1st. You shot the bear first. I believe it was. November 1st. Yeah. So, this is actually a crazy story. We had hiked into this spot together and then we split up and not like with the deer that I had shot last year, we split up probably about 200 yards, but within the same sort of area. And it was maybe 10 minutes after sunset and I hear this like three syllable, I don't know how else to describe it like uh, sort of noise and it happened three times and I knew that that was the sound of a bear dying that that was the death moan but I never heard it in person before and I remember being like oh my god like a bear just died could that be Nick that has to be Nick but maybe there's somebody else here like I don't know what's happening am I just hearing things and I could my brain was just like going in a spiral um and maybe 10 or so minutes later, I hear like 
all of this crashing behind me and it's Nick <laughs> and he comes running. <laughs> he comes just like running to the bottom of my tree and collapse and he says like I just killed a bear <laughs> and, so dramatic uh, oh yeah it was so dramatic but it was so exciting it was insane yeah that's and, awesome it was insane um, I've yeah ne- I've never killed a bear before so that's Ooh, that was two for me and that one was up close and personal dude really yeah it was wild it was wild so we her spot where she killed that seven pointer, which was a nightmare to access, and we finally figured it out. We accessed it from that way, which takes forty five minutes, maybe even longer if you're going slow. Kinda I didn't really drop her off. She knew where she was going. So she went to her spot and I was like, I'm gonna go that way, just cause the wind is coming from the west and I don't want to mess your hunt up, so I'm just gonna keep going. Kept going, kept going, kept going. And I was like, uh, let me just go to the top of this point. And my, me and my brother had been there on opening day. And we dropped a pin on this awesome buck bed that was looking down onto this bench. So on the south side, there was, uh, there was some oak and a bunch of thick mountain laurel and some scrubby hemlock. And it was just thick, dark, wet, but there was oaks in it. So I was like, Damn, this is a good spot. We poked around for a little bit, found a spot, put a pin on the map with the intention of coming back. Came back on November 1st, but I came back from the opposite way. And I was like, the wind's right. I'm just going to do it. Whatever. Kept climbing, kept climbing, kept climbing. Got a little carried away. Ended up at the buck bed, top of the mountain. It's like, screw it. I'm going to sit here. I remember finding the spot and it looked really good. So why not? Climbed a tree. I was like questioning myself, like, is this the right tree? There's a bench up above me, like eye level. There's a bench down below me, and I'm just like right in the middle. Like, just pick one, dude. Like, why you got to be in the middle? You know what I mean? So I'm questioning myself. It's freezing cold. I I got to put on another jacket. So I have my release on. I take my release off, put it somewhere. Like, I don't know. I can't remember what I did. Hung it up on my bow hanger or something put my jacket on knock the damn release out of the tree <laughs> lands on the ground i'm like son of a bitch <laughs> it took me so long to get up in this tree way up high that is my sign that this is not the damn right tree so i climbed all the way down took all my stuff down tore it all down this is like four o'clock at this point whatever just make it right be quiet you won't have to do it again so i got up on the top bench right on the trail like the trail is underneath me. But that's my only spot because it's mountain laurel, hemlock, covered up. So I had a shot on my weak side, maybe like 15 yards. There's so many branches in the way, whatever. There's a trail there, and I'm on a trail right underneath me. Get set up, quiet, freezing, absolutely freezing. Here's some noise. Holy shit, there's a bear. <laughs> Walking on the trail underneath me, dude. <laughs> right underneath me. I'm so cold. I told you I switched. Uh, we were talking about it earlier. Yeah. I got rid of the thumb button and I switched back to a trigger. trigger. I just couldn't shoot the thumb right. So normally my thumb would be on my D loop, just hanging there. I just grab it, draw my bow. My fingers were so damn cold. I could not get my hook around my damn D loop. It took me literally ten seconds. I have it all on film. Took me 10 seconds to get it on. The bear's still walking, feeding, walking, feeding. Maybe like 30 seconds. Less than a minute, but felt like forever. Right underneath me. I didn't really love the shot, but I knew that I could execute it. And if she got behind me, or if she like stepped where my tree was, she was going to smell me and just go. Yep. So she was like right underneath me, directly underneath me. And I could... I set my pin down as low as it could go, that little single pin HHA, yep. low as it could go, just below her spine. I was like, that's a lethal shot, 100% a lethal shot. Yep. Shot her. She made a terrible noise. Her, both of her feet were like up on a, on a boulder too, so like I had all vitals. Oh, yeah. Right through. She died in 10 seconds. Turned around, ran the other way. And uh, I haven't really told many people this part of the story, but I will say it. Ooh, exclusive. This isn't yeah. Exclusive. I, honestly, I really haven't told many people because it kind of like, it made me feel weird. I didn't really like it. 
When she ran back into the laurel, two cubs scurried up a tree. They were big, though. I mean, they weren't like, yeah. they weren't 30 pound cubs. They were 100 pounds a piece. They were big bears. They went to the tippy, tippy top of this oak tree. Tippy, tippy top. I'm talking 100 feet high. They're scratching the bark, like woofing at me, like making this weird noise. And I was like, damn, they're looking at me. They know I'm right here. 100% they're looking at me. And their mom just died right down there. And I was kind of like getting in my feelings. I was like, damn. Not that I wouldn't have done it or that I shouldn't have done it, but like, I don't like that feeling right now. I don't like this at all. It's also important to note that that is legal in Pennsylvania. I, I was just going to say that. Yeah. yeah, that is legal. And it's not legal in some states, but it is legal here. It is yeah. not legal in a lot of Western states, but it is legal yeah. in Pennsylvania. And same with like New York. So you yes. can't do it there, but in Pennsylvania. You can't. I wasn't breaking any rules, but I don't know that I would have done it if she walked, would have walked out with her cubs. You know, I would have, yeah. I would have felt a lot different. I'm not saying that I wouldn't have, because maybe I would have. I don't know. Yeah. Stuff happens when you're just like, you know, in that crazy adrenaline rush. Because I knew it was illegal. I read the rules, obviously. Yeah. But they're up in the tree, barking at me, woofing at me. And I'm kind of like, she had already done her death moon. Like, I'm talking 10 seconds. She was done. So I knew she was dead. I lowered my bow to the ground, all the way down to the bottom, 20 feet down. After I'd already switched trees and dropped my release and all that stuff, everything's crazy. And I knew Allie was at the bottom, and I figured she probably heard that. And I had no service, or she had no service. One so she was other. down below you on yes. the mountain. Okay. So we couldn't communicate. And uh, as soon as I lowered my bow down, the damn cubs start coming down the tree. Like, walking at my tree. They weren't, like, coming at me or anything. Yeah. But I'm, like, getting a little nervous. <laughs> they're 100 pounds, 80 pounds a piece, 100 pounds a piece. They were they're they were put, second, they were gonna, second year cubs. Yeah, they're going to put up a good fight. Yeah, they were second year cubs. <laughs> I had yeah. no sidearm, I had nothing. And I wasn't worried about them attacking me. I was just like, in general, just... Uncomfortable with you. Overly yeah. excited. Like, overly excited. Like, damn, now my bow's on the ground and those cubs are right in front of me. What do I do? <laughs> so I start climbing down the tree. As soon... They're looking at me. Like, I'm on my last stick. And they're looking at me. As soon as my foot hit the ground, they took off running. Like, they yeah. didn't want anything to do with it. And I, uh, I ran down the hill towards Alley. I was freezing cold absolutely frozen i swear i did like actual muscle damage in my quads because the damn hill that we were on was so steep so so steep and i was so cold frozen solid i just tore my legs up got down to her completely out of breath completely just like overwhelmed with excitement didn't even know what to say and she was like you shot a bear, didn't you? And I was like, yes. He <laughs> fell, fell back in the leaves. Like, <laughs> I can't believe it. I've been trying to do that for so long. Yeah. I was so jacked up, man. It was crazy. Oh, that's it, so awesome. It was so crazy. The fact that you heard it and you were there for it. Yeah. And then we had to get that thing out of the woods. Oh, yeah. That which was, was an story. absolute nightmare because it... So, interestingly... The estimated weight from the Game Commission, I <laughs> believe, is a lot smaller than the bear actually was. Because oh, yeah, it wasn't even close. When they came to, they actually came right here to measure it. Really? Yeah. yeah right mm -hmm. the they came right here. I called them the next morning. Two and officers. They said, hey, uh, all of our stations so are closed. Archery it was season. a Monday. Like yeah. Yeah. The stations aren't open. It was a Monday or Tuesday, whatever it was. But they were like, yeah, we'll send some... Uh, some officers, some wardens out, and I was like, cool, the gate's open, come on down. They showed up here and did their thing, pulled yeah. the teeth, tagged so they it, took made sure the it was hide, good. laid it out, and at that point, the hide had shrunk a lot because it was rolled up in a ball in a game bag, sat there all night, you know, like in the did cold. Did you guys pack it out or drag oh, it? Oh, yeah. So we drug it this until we thing. couldn't drag it anymore because it was a giant jelly roll like it was it was, big. It was like yeah. trying to drag out 200 pounds of like blubbery lard it was so roly-poly yeah not like you could drag out a 200 pound deer okay we've done that plenty of times this bear was just too jelly and it got to the point that we just couldn't do it I um, fell in the creek. I was freezing. <laughs> like I was head to toe soaking wet. Like we had no idea so what to do. So we packed it out. It was a Monday. We packed I was it like, out. I got no buddies to help me. Everybody's yeah. working. Yeah. It's so much easier to pack it yeah. out. It was, it was. But after we had already like. Tried to drag it halfway. The hill that I shot it on, it wasn't a hill. It was like 
steep. Straight up mountain. Like you have to crawl. You got a Spider-Man up this thing. It was so yes. thick and so steep. <laughs> and by the time we got it to the bottom, we were like, there's no way. Even mm-hmm. a little 10 yard incline, there's no way. Yeah. yeah. It's not happening. I think he probably shot it. I mean, he shot it around sunset, <clears throat> which had to have yeah. been maybe, I don't know, five o'clock, depending on the time of the year, sunset differs a little bit. And I don't think we got home until like 1 a.m. Really? Oh, it took a while. Yeah. It was a night. I mean, it was the best thing ever. It was also a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, like it's, one so, of those it's so satisfying once you do get back. Oh, though, yeah. Dude, it's it's a night. great memory. So to she, have. Packed, <clears throat> she packed the head and the hide, and I think it was 46 pounds, right? Yeah. The head and the we hide was 46 it pounds. When we got back. But then I had all the meat and the fat in like mm-hmm. an actual mystery ranch frame pack. Yeah. Western yeah. Frame pack. And it was heavier than hell. And my quads, like I said, I ran down the hill. I was not warmed up. I destroyed my quads. I could not walk for like three days, dude. Like I had fluid build up and everything. And like I sound like a baby right now, but I'm in pretty good shape. I just messed myself up. Yeah, you, I mean, you're you were a physical shape. trainer by is that yeah yeah by you're, trade by trade yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I messed myself up pretty good, <laughs> but it was it was the coolest hunting experience I've ever had, ever. That's awesome. And so getting back to like the beach. And the hickory and the oak thing. That's where they all were. Last and the year, laurel. And the laurel. Oh, yeah. I love laurel. There was yeah. some laurel. Was like... There was some mountain, or um, some uh, hemlock. Yeah. And it was just s- springs, seeps all over the place. Can, can, I, can I come to this spot? Because, like, that's literally everything that I could ever imagine that I'd want, like, in one location. You can come. Yes, you can come. You yes. Can come. <laughs> I don't hide spots. I really don't. To, with my friends, I'm not going to put them on the internet. But actually, we're we're going to post the uh, the waypoints on this uh, yeah. or the GPS coordinates on hey, this podcast. I had my phone. You go have your phone. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> That's the way it works. <laughs> um, hold on. I I'm gonna have to go take a piss. Oh, I'll bought the. Okay. Yeah. No. Dude, this, we hello. Can, we Welcome can... to the East Meets West podcast. <laughs> I'm Ali Deandra. I'm your host. <laughs> this is my guest, Nick Berger. World. We don't need to take it over, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, shut up. But no, wasn't that cool? I mean, that was for me and you, best friends, husband, wife, that was amazing. It was really cool. It was amazing. Yeah. I had, that was the first time that I've ever seen a dead black bear in person. And when we first got up to it, I felt a little sad. Looking at her. I did too. um, Because they do have this canine-like quality that makes you think of your pet that you love so dearly, which is, okay, like this is, I feel like, very soft to think like that. But it's true. It's normal. Yeah. It just, like, I didn't really love it. And then as we started, like, moving her around and getting her into a position to start to gut her, field dress her. Like, <clears throat> it's similar with deer, where it really transitions from being a, this like beautiful living being creature to being meat and being more of like an object. And there's no, like, it takes away that um, emotion that comes with it. And you, you started gutting her. And that was the first time that I'd ever seen anything like that. Which I gutted her before we knew that we were going to have to pack her out. It yeah, was we thought that we big. were going to drag her out at that point. Yeah, that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> and then, like, at that point, I think it really, like, I could really take it in, soak it in at, at how, thank you, at how cool of an experience that was. And um, it, I just never, like, experienced anything like that. I've never hunted coyote. I've never hunted any sort of predator before. My experience has always been with hooved animals. Yeah. Um and reptiles. So, <laughs> so. Rep- iguanas and yeah. stuff. <laughs> so selfishly, that was uh I don't know, I feel like saying that killing something as an accomplishment is like kind of weird. I don't know, it just doesn't like mix yes. in my brain. But like that was a goal of mine to be within bow range of a bear. Because I think that they're the coolest things in the world. My favorite animal all time, elk, cheetahs, anything. doesn't matter what it is. Pennsylvania black bear. I love Pennsylvania black bear. So being within range of a Pennsylvania black bear with a tag in my pocket, 
in season with my bow out of a saddle. It was yeah. like top, 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 top. Can you believe it? It just happened. And the meat is phenomenal. That was just what I was going to ask. The meat is phenomenal. The hide's going to be so cool. We're going to put it right over the fireplace right there. I and rendered all of the fat. Allie rendered Did all you? Of the fat. Yes. Yeah. I can show you it. I want if Ooh, I wasn't connected I, to this thing, I would show it's you like it a right white, now. It's like a white candle. It's insane. Yeah, I want to see that. It's beautiful. I have some in the refrigerator and then the rest of it's in the freezer. Yeah, it's like no no part went wasted. Mm-hmm. The only thing that like I said, the only thing that like irked me a little bit was the death moan is like it's intense, it's harrowing. It like it just sticks in your head. You're like, Holy shit, like what did I just do? I did something crazy intense the thing is screaming at me like why did i just do that deer don't do that they just crash and roll down the hill you're like sometimes they make bad noises but not like that sometimes but every time i've only shot two bears but both bears i'm like oh wow that's something different yeah intense and then when you get up to it it's even more intense but the only thing that like kind of had me a little bit like damn maybe shouldn't have is the cubs but I didn't, I couldn't see. You didn't know that at the time. They were 100 yards still in the woods feeding. And I watched the sow. In the, yeah. I watched the sow come in. I want to say a minute, you know. Time flies when you're like at full jaw, whatever. But uh, While it still feels like that yeah. sounds eternity. Like, that sounds like a, a <laughs> but I was that fra- hold on, that phrase sounds like it should be on like a Walmart hunting shirt. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> Time flies when you're at full draw. It does. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, no. See, I feel like it's a snail. Oh. Oh, I feel like time slows down and it's like, I've been at full draw for 20 minutes, even Whatever. though it's been 10 seconds. So you get what I'm trying so to what, say. So what have you cooked with the... Uh, the bear meat. I straight up a couple nights ago for dinner, I just had bear meat in a bowl. Two nights in a row. It was, it's better than any beef, any brisket, any prime rib, any like whatever. A stew. It so is, with bear, you have to cook it above 165 degrees internal yeah, you temperature. You got to be safe about so it. So even the back strap, you can't eat it like yeah, a steak. We're not eating steak. So no. So you have to prepare it in a form where you can cook it to that temperature, like mm-hmm. tacos, stews, chilies, that kind of vibe. Yeah. So typically what we do is it's it's ground up. I don't think we've done a meatloaf, but we'll do everything. No, meatloaf is anything with ground meat, stew meat, we'll do. Yeah, and like stuffed peppers. It's phenomenal. Chilies, yeah, it's phenomenal. It's also good. Every time. You can eat it plain in Breakfast a bowl. Breakfast sausage. Yeah, you know what? I have perfected a breakfast sausage recipe. I haven't done it with bear yet. We should. Yeah. I, Especially with, with the venison. fat. Mm-hmm. So I had probably some of the best breakfast sausage I ever had when I was in Alaska. Um, Heather Kelly from Heather's Choice. Yes. Yeah, she had she made, makes good stuff. Yeah, and she, and she had made bear black bear from alaska a breakfast sausage and i had that there and it was incredible yeah. it was so good did mm. she keep a lot of the fat in it or did she add a it different was probably type of a fat? spring bear that's why bear i don't even bear I, I, cool. yeah i couldn't yeah. even tell you what it yes, where when it was from an but. interesting thing about bear too like a spring bear is not the equivalent of a fall bear because they're storing up fat for the winter exactly for the yes. hibernation the fall bear are this, fatty this salad fatty, that I fatty. Shot had more fat than it did backstrap legit oh my god there's pictures videos of like, it i can it's, show you proof. it's insane it's crazy Jeez. and yeah. you know what you know what's crazy about that what i didn't really think about that was execution of the shot so i shot her down under the spine my broadhead had to go through hide a lot of fur hide fat tissue then into vital and i did not get a lot of penetration it was like which is insane for his bow setup yeah and yeah i'm shooting it, what 29 inches yeah so you have longer 70 arms. pounds yep. yeah heavy yeah, arrow, heavy arrow blah, blah, blah. Yep. and i did not get a lot of penetration because i didn't realize i had to go through freaking three inches of fat and hide before it ever even hit meat and then <laughs> i had to go through meat yeah into vitals but thank god it was a good shot that is in crazy. the future, I will think about that more yeah. because on a fall bear, especially not on a small one, they're going to have a lot of fat. Interesting. Yeah. Also, interestingly. And it slows down an arrow. It slows down a broadhead. It weakens everything. Because of the way that he shot that bear, there was not an exit wound. 
Mm-hmm. So the arrow entered, you know, got all jumbled around inside. Yeah. Did a fabulous job of killing the animal, but did not do a fabulous job of leaving a blood trail because there was no exit wound. Zero blood. So we were following pins and needles of blood in the dark. It only took us 20 or 30 minutes, maybe, but it felt like a long time. And we knew that she was dead from yeah. the death mode. I was frustrated. But was had frustrated. that been a white tail, it would have been like extremely frustrating without knowing that the animal was dead, yeah. following pins and needles, and just hoping that we would find something at the end of the blood trail. Um, in this circumstance, we knew that we would find something, but it yeah. was still difficult. Well, yeah, and especially we with had that shot, you know, with coming in from the top. See, there's no, and when you don't have penetration at the bottom, there's no way for it to bleed out, you know. Yep. It's got to come up, yeah. and the gravity's not, you know. There was yep. nothing. There was nothing. I just knew that she ran into the timber and made that terrible noise, and I was like, okay, that's a dead bear. I've experienced that before. That's a dead bear. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. That is crazy. And I'm excited to see this rendered. Bear yeah, path. Yes. I have to pee Afterwards. actually. So I'm going to go to the bathroom and then I'll grab the bear. Path. Okay. Nick and I will keep keep yes. talking here. So we've we went through all of us with bathroom breaks. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, beer on a podcast is not. Not very efficient. No, <laughs> but it's fun. It is. It does make it does make it good. So and then so after you'd shot your bear. And we talked, well, is it Allie next that had shot a buck? Allie had shot a buck, yeah. She'd shot a buck, which is an awesome, big awesome. All by point. herself, dude. Like, I wasn't even, I was in New York when she shot the thing. Really? She FaceTimed me. <laughs> <laughs> screaming and crying. <laughs> it's funny because we can do that now because she's yeah, not here. Uh-huh, yeah. So we can yeah. act like that was her. <laughs> so she's freaking out holy shit, I shot a buck. I'm like, damn, it's five o'clock here. It's prime time, but yeah, I'm getting out of the stand. I'm coming home right now. Awesome deer, man. She did. She picked the spot. She knew where they were traveling through. She had been hunting it for like a week straight. Finally caught this nice eight point. It, it's like I said, that's... and that really wasn't on food. That was on uh, just a movement feature, just a funnel terrain. Just What it's... what did that funnel look like? Oh my God, this, I, she's just handed me the rendered bear fat the mason jar it's a candle fat. isn't it it's crazy yeah it's kind of freaky yeah huh isn't it incredible how pure white and consistent like in its opacity and everything yeah that is, it literally <laughs> does look like a candle here wait let me open it you can sniff it too it really doesn't smell uh, off-putting at all no there's no smell really yeah it's weird you would expect it to smell like super majorly yeah. gamey and weird, but well, so I had I shot the bear on. So we had trail cameras around the Crazy area. Shit. There's mm-hmm. always bears there, always. I never thought that I would shoot one in a million years with my bow, with my rifle. Yeah, maybe I have a chance with my bow. Never thought in a million years, but there was blueberry. Or I'm sorry, it's not blueberry. It's technically a huckleberry, a beech nut, hickory, and red oak all on the same damn hill. <laughs> and it's like, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but when I say it was like marbles, if you're walking down, you'd slip and fall on your ass. That's how many damn nuts there were on this hill. You would That's slip. she said. You would slip and fall. <laughs> you would slip and fall on the nuts, dude, because you couldn't get a foothold on solid ground. It was just like, <laughs> it was crazy. And they came there every damn night on the trail camp. So I was like, shit, I gotta go. Yeah, everybody listening to this right now is like, this is like the ideal, like everything you could want all in one area. That is incredible. Good luck. Yeah. It's probably like once in will, years that that mixes perfectly. Yeah, I'll sell the waypoint, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, yeah, I'll give you 10%. But it so is. that 7.2 is the same damn spot, pretty much. Really? It's not, though, because actually that spot changed <laughs> a where lot. The food moves. The, okay. Yeah, the food moves. That's actually a really good tip that i wouldn't have known if i wouldn't be hunting like similar spots year to year food moves yeah it sure does it sure does like one spot can be phenomenal one year and it's crickets the next year yeah it's all food based but the spot up on top is just a terrain feature where that's that's just how they move 
that's how the that's how the mountain wants them to move and they follow it where, yeah where you shot your buck this year is that the way that that was set up i kind shot of... no i shot my buck in a completely different spot this and year this, this year, year that this was year. A terrain feature yeah um now this year i mean it's a spot that i'm super familiar with um but have never like really considered for bucks it's honestly it's mostly a spot that i've hunted for does but if you know where the does are yeah, true of during course the rut. during, the rut, I know, yeah. that's how during the rut you're hunting does essentially yeah because yep. the bucks are gonna and follow. also i think it's also important to note that i um like i very strongly enjoy hunting for the adventure and for food and while I think like these things are cool, right? Like we're talking about um, bears, which you were saying was like a sort of one, not a once in a lifetime, but sort of like a once in a lifetime type of thing, a bucket list type thing. Could be. These like big bucks that are super mature. Like that's, um, that's all super cool and super fun. But for me, it's truly just a byproduct of being outside and enjoying yeah. that, you know? Like I don't, and while I mentioned that we had trail camera pictures of, you know, deer the one year, I don't have cameras that I'm like monitoring particular bucks or deer personally, because I feel like that, I think for some people that ramps up and like excites their hunting experience. But for me, it changes my experience in a way that I don't like for myself it changes expectations yes it and changes more, expectations and it becomes about something for me that i don't want it to be about for me yeah so yeah. in like for my own little simple mind i just like to hunt and have fun and experiment with food and meat enjoy butchering enjoy being around people enjoy telling stories like this um you know and then there's, there's but, probably yeah. more people that are like that than you think Mm -hmm. But they feel like they need to tell themselves a false narrative of like, I need to do this because this person's doing this, mm -hmm. or I need to keep up with this or whatever. And There's too many big stories. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and like, and and, and of course they're because and there and there is because there's people that thoroughly enjoy that and like, you know, I I've realized that it depends on where I'm at. Like I've I've hunted Pennsylvania for so long and I've got to know places that like I truly enjoy like trying to hunt specific deer. Yeah. But then when I go somewhere else, I like a different type of experience. Like mm -hmm. when I went to New York, like I just wanted to hunt deer. Yeah. And have that. And it's I think you just what I guess what I'm trying to say is just being true to what makes you happy and what you want out of it and Definitely. not trying to follow what anybody else is doing. Like what I'm doing isn't right necessarily right or what you're doing isn't necessarily right. It's what makes yes. it makes Oh my it god, cool I feel you. so strongly about this that um this is actually it's like super particular to hunting and um i mean you can call it like the hunting industry but i actually think it's more of like the hunting community as a whole like mm -hmm. hunters as a collective like i love that people enjoy different aspects of hunting and that people want to share different aspects of hunting and that people are in it for different reasons and I don't think that there's only one way to think about it. I don't think that there's only one way to approach it. So I try really hard to like express what I'm feeling while simultaneously making sure that I'm not somehow like whether it's aggressively or, you know, sort of passive aggressively, like I'm not ever trying to deter anyone from just hunting the way they want to hunt and yeah. doing whatever that they want to do that makes just them happy. Yeah, just do your thing. Dude, my, my best hunt thing. this year, the bear, the giant buck, me and my brother went out <clears throat> final day, basically a freaking tornado. There were trees dropping everywhere. It was super dangerous. It was dangerous. actually like, like two days after the massive tornadoes in Kentucky. Which was, okay. yeah, awful. Like, so this, was, this was the last day of yes. rifle season. Dude, yep. it was serious, yeah. and it was bad. And we were already way back there. 
And uh, we were hiding under a boulder because we were like, dude, this is this is a little too much. Like, we're being stupid right now, right? We both looked at each other and agreed, like, yeah, they we're, were being stupid. They were watching trees falling. So we got off of our high point, went down under a rock and like, let's just huddle up here, man. It's the last day of the season. At least our heads are safe. We're not going to get crushed. We're not going to see any damn deer, but whatever. Five o'clock, here comes a bunch of does. Matt's got a doe tag. I'm like, yeah, dude, you got it, you got it. Bam. Whatever. Spooked, ran over the next ridge. We socked him. He shot one. Just a little button buck. We, you know, he was kind of upset that he shot a button buck. I'm like, dude, also it's legal. It's a, also legal. Yeah, also right. legal. <laughs> also, this is Pennsylvania. Okay. Also legal. We follow the rules. It's an read, antler list here. We read the rule book. <laughs> he was like, damn, I shot a button buck. I'm like, dude, that was the coolest time I had all year. Who gets to stock whitetails? Like, we straight up spot and stocked whitetails. Yeah. It was awesome. In the wind and in the wet, they couldn't see us because all the beech trees were going sideways. They couldn't see us moving. They couldn't hear us with the water on the ground. It was so much damn fun. And it was just a little button buck. Because that was his experience. That's what yeah. he wanted. That's what I wanted. That's what we wanted. Awesome. I mean, and of course, it's the best meat you can get. A little yearling deer. Oh, yeah. It's the best meat. <laughs> We cooked some up that night. Oh, of course. Didn't we? On the Did fire. We? we had shish kebabs on the damn fire. Well, it, you know, the power better. was out. Like, there was no electricity. Yeah, we, I lost power that yes. day. Yeah. No, we had no one. internet, yeah. no phone, no lights, yep. no TV. We couldn't even yeah. have the blower on the damn uh, fireplace here. Isn't we it just funny sat outside, made when you kebabs. lose power? Like, okay, so I, I can spend all the time in the world out in the woods without anything and be fine. When you're in your own house and you lose power, it's a we you you get in touch with uncomfortable. yourself. It's uncomfortable because I'm like, well, maybe I'll read a book. Well, I can't fucking see. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I, it's uh-huh. dark outside. And uh-huh. I don't have any power. But no, dude, it's... it was expectations. Like we didn't <laughs> yeah. have expectations. We were like, we're not going to see deer. It doesn't matter. Let's just hang out. Let's talk about stuff. Yeah. Let's throw a dip in. Let's yeah. drink some coffee. Whatever. Holy shit! There's a deer. It's a button buck. It was the most exciting thing in the world. Yeah. A little button buck, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's snowing, completely snowing. Wind is crazy. No electricity. And we're making tenderloins on the damn fire on a stick. Yeah, we butchered the, the entire deer that night out by the fire. So much I fun. brought out all the, like, We started the boards, trucks, let the headlights knives. run. Yeah, we had music playing, a big bonfire. Oh. And it wasn't even a buck. You know, it wasn't even a big buck. It wasn't a bear. It, it was... Wasn't, it the was a best freaking way 75 pound yearling to end yeah. year. But it was amazing. Yeah. He had the tag. He wanted to fill it. He needed a deer. He needed the meat. Damn if we didn't celebrate. Heck yeah. That's that's awesome. And I, and I think that should be celebrated more as far as it's just what that experience is and, and what makes you happy. And, and the people that are there, I think, makes a, a big impact on that as well. That's you know. Makes most of it. Most of it, yeah. yeah. Most of it. Exactly. Like, I, I don't know. I feel like like a lot of times, like for me with whitetails, like it's a more of a solo endeavor, like for a lot of it. Yeah. And I've come like, and that's why I love camp so much. Like, mm-hmm. even though like I might be hunting alone in a lot of situations, like being able to come back to camp and have those people there to celebrate with you and enjoy it and tell those stories and do those things. And it's, it's funny that like when at our camp, uh, we've all are obsessed with hunting deer. Like my whole family is, it doesn't matter though, if it's a deer like the size of my dad shot this year, or if it's a yearling button buck that will come in, everybody's just as pumped. We're all staying out there talking about it. We're all drinking beer, having a good time. Just like, that's, that's what I love about it. Yeah. It's so great. I do think there's something to be said about hunting in an area like the big woods where it's difficult to kill a deer. It's yes. hard. It's difficult to see a deer. Yeah, it's <laughs> really hard. Especially if it's a place that you've never hunted before, like a new area, anything like that. It's hard. So it really does breed that mindset of every success is a success and frankly tr- also true that like every adventure is something to be savored 
And I find that really true for this camp. We probably kill three to four deer a year collectively. Between approximately. 10 people. Yeah. yeah. It's hard. It's very hard. So when it happens, it's always celebrated in a way that is like... Over the top. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like the best night of the year Over every the time it happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. No, and it, it is. And that, I think that's it's cool to... To when people do get to experience that, I mean this this type of hunting is not easy. So when you're able to kill anything, bring meat home out of this because it's it, there's not there's not any like focused food. There's not anything that's like bringing them in. In you know each each style of hunting, each place you hunt, all has their own challenges and their own things. But like Absolutely. it's just what what I I don't know. Just like the the solitude of hunting in these types of places and being able to sit there and I don't know. It's, it's just something that I haven't found anywhere else. You just gave me like an epiphany. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I've been really into tattoos lately also, like similarly how I went on this, um, expensive, expensive. And you just made me like, I just had this aha moment of, I need to figure out something that could represent solitude. Because that is what first attracted me to hunting. Mm -hmm. So when my first season with a compound bow was in Idaho for elk. And I did a lot of that alone. And one of the things that I found that I enjoyed the most was solitude. Just purely being outside. And it doesn't have to be something as grand and like crazy necessarily as the backcountry in Idaho but I feel that same solitude here. And I feel that same solitude when I'm on a paddleboard in Florida. And I feel that same solitude when I'm really alone in the outdoors anywhere that's uh, like away from other people, you know? And that feeling is something that I never experienced in my life until I was a hunter. And it's something that I now cherish so much. And I enjoy hunting by myself for that reason. I also enjoy hunting with Nick because we have all of these shared memories and experiences together that I cherish just as dearly. But there is something I think to be said about just like, and you probably, like maybe you've never even realized that because you grew up doing that. But like, the, do you remember the first time that you hunted by yourself or that you were alone in the woods i do actually and it was just behind my parents house there was a wooden ladder stand that my dad had let us go hunt and we go and i remember sitting in that and and being in it i don't think i reflected on it the way that you did because you were more mature at that point yeah i was just some young <laughs> dumb kid that's just like I'm going to be the best running back here pretty sure, you know, shortly. I'm, I'm, you know, like I'm like thinking of completely different things. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't yes. understand it, but yes. I think one of the, the funny things was for me is I don't think I truly appreciated like this area or just like big woods hunting or really hunting in general until I left and went to college and hunted areas that there wasn't as much expansive areas to be able to hunt yeah. and i had small tracks and i had to get permission i had to do this and that and th- that has its own side of it but like i what i learned was i appreciated so much of what i grew up and being able to really walk anywhere and be able to hunt and and just be away from people and I, it, it took me a while to really understand why i enjoyed it you know what i mean like i always knew i loved hunting but i never really like took a deep dive and it it took it took me a little bit longer to mature in life okay <laughs> sure i'm still getting there dude being like not super religious going into the woods it's like prayer i don't yeah. know how to say it. i went to catholic school i was raised catholic christian i don't profess to be you know the best catholic at all christian at all but when i go in the woods i don't even go to church i haven't been to church 15 years, 20 years, I don't even know. When I go in the woods, I'm like, there's something else that I'm thinking about. It's a bigger picture. It's not just me. It means more. It means a whole lot more. 
yeah. when I'm with other people, it means even more. It's amplified. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When that yeah. when we're all on the same page, regardless of what our experience is, what our goals are, it just means more. It's connectedness. It's being alone, but it's being connected. It's weird. It weirds me out. Sometimes I'm thinking these thoughts in my head, and I'm like, "What's going on?" <laughs> I like it. It's positive. Yeah, it feels good. But like, I didn't know that I even like had these feelings. Yeah, it's mm. crazy. I didn't know I could feel. <laughs> That's actually like <laughs> most of the time. Yeah, I was Dude, we, we were driving <laughs> to New York today, and she's like looking out the window, like. Oh man, the forest is so cool. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Lincoln Park's on. Turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, turn it up. Actually, that's not <laughs> whatever. Works, whatever it was. I am the one obsessed with music. I'm like, I'm listening to headbanger stuff. You know, uh, I'm pumped up. We're going deer hunting. Like, I'm not in the woods yet. I'm still. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, go. Let's I was go, just go. looking around as we were like, yeah, driving, and I was just so in awe. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm. I'm <laughs> I'm definitely not an angel, but no. when I get in the woods, no, you are not an angel. When I get in the woods, man, it's like, holy shit, I have like feelings. Like I, holy shit, I. Feel there's a thing above my head right now, and I'm like, I'm absorbing it all, and yeah. I, I don't even know how to explain it. I can't put it into words, but it makes my heart beat faster. But it makes me calmer at the same time. You know what I mean? It's it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And also, I'd like to know, I feel like not every single experience that I have in the woods is like that. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of times that I'm like MFing, like uh, something that's tangled, something that like I can't, like, oh, this pack is fitting me weird or like this and that. Yeah. Or I don't see anything and I'm tired. And so like not every time is like that, but I would say like more often than not, I leave the woods with that kind of feeling. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Yeah, we can, we can, keep it real, but we can also glorify it. Is, it. It's, it's still frustrating. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fresh. I mean, it's it's physical labor most of yeah. the time. Like, yeah, you got to be down with being physical and a little I mean, dirty even, and a little uncomfortable. Even people that hunt private property and they have their own perfect oasis, they've put yeah. so much labor into that. Absolutely, yeah. they put so much time and so much work. Yeah, all summer long they're. Pulling ticks. That has to be such a completely plows. like a completely different yet also equally accomplishing feeling. It is, but a lot of people wouldn't say I, that. What do you mean? A lot of people wouldn't say private that? land hunting versus public oh, land. Well, Big that's woods just are, like that's it's, just small minded. No, I know it they is. clash, but like, damn, those guys no, were all the same. Ass is off. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, do you know it, how much money they spent you, on equipment? Well, not gasoline, only it's not seed, just money. It's just like time. I mean, yes, of course. Okay, money's short part of that, but like, yeah, just the time they're, that goes into the care of it. They are just as obsessed. Like as we I are. care for my dog, maybe more, and then I see her accomplish something, and I say, wow. <laughs> yeah, Abby wants to be on the wants to be on the podcast. So, <laughs> so you killed a buck on opening day this year. Yeah. What the hell did you do the rest of the year? Yeah, wait. Did you just scout you and blow other people's hunts walking through the woods? Like, no, actually, I did the opposite, did and because like I knew people hunting some of my areas, and I still haven't been back like, to a lot of them. Like I've really? had my cameras in there, and I was just like no need for me to go in blow them out for anybody else and i felt like my cameras in good spots i said i'm gonna i actually didn't spend as much time in the woods as i normally would have i shifted focus and i was working on my house and doing some other things and and i did i traveled to new york and i went to west virginia so i did but i i kind of um stayed out of the woods a little more than I normally would, which is weird. Like, I actually had anxiety over it because I... I'm sure I would, too. Because I felt like I should be doing something because, like, I'm so hyper-focused on deer it's season. November 8th. What am I going to do? Yeah, it was weird. And I did go out a couple times hunting bear, but basically what I did was hunt my best rut spots, sure. hoping just to see deer, yeah, yeah. you know, and just kind of, like, trust that. Pull a card here. The, and yeah. There. And I was che- you know, checking some cameras there, but, like... It was a weird. It was a weird feeling, and I yeah. felt like I was like, I was being sweet. lazy almost. But mm-hmm. like, I was like, but I already had my tag filled. But I just felt like I was being lazy, and it was it was a weird, mm-hmm. a weird feeling. But I I'll tell you what, the one thing that was, um, was cool. I just go out and I just sit there, and I was like, there was no like, <laughs> there was no stress of me like trying to figure something out or trying to do anything like. 
I was just like, man, I'm just totally enjoying bonus time. Yeah, bonus time. <laughs> that's that's, that's right, bonus time. That's exactly yeah. right. So it's probably the best scouting you can have. Yeah, it, it was, and I, I did do some of the scouting, like, and and I went to some new areas and walked around and went up to New York and and everything, and it's just it's it's cool. I I love. I love getting to see new places, and that's like one of my favorite things. You know, with, with deer hunting, I've talked about this. Um, I don't know if I've talked about it on the podcast or somewhere. I've, I know I've talked about this topic, but I, I, I love hunting new areas because I just I love the adventure of like sounds cliche, but seeing what's over the next ridge. Like I yeah. love just walking every square inch of an area and just seeing it and seeing how things flow and trying to understand how deer are moving through it. And then I also have satisfaction hunting the same areas and learning from it. Yep. And being able to be like, okay, this is what I observed yeah. last year. Maybe, you know, does this apply to the next year? Oh, no, the food food source has changed, so that's going to change everything. But there's still something I can pull out of that. And then you compound that, and three, four years down the road, you're like, I got a pretty good grasp on what's going on here. And that's a, a satisfying feeling. And, I, like, for me, one day I want to own my own private land. And I, I talked about this. I just did a, a podcast with Levi Morgan, and I was talking about I was like, I'd love to own my own property someday. and be able to, to manage it and go through that process because that's a whole nother process but it's the same thing yep. it's the same type time. of yeah the same time commitment and you're, you're still committed to learning something and doing it it's just it's just, i feel like the obsession is probably tenfold because you can actually manipulate what's happening on the landscape yeah you can cut you can plot you can spend every hour of the day on your land yeah it's different but same same but different you know it's like it has sure. has probably the same level i yet. aspire to do the same thing that you just said yeah i find it fascinating i do too and it's because just, i can't have it yeah right now i can't have it but one day that would be so cool one day when you're older one day when i'm older when i'm like that's what i say all the time when i'm like <laughs> when i'm older <laughs> 50 i don't know <laughs> yeah but yeah it's cool um, uh, I'm glad to see, I'm glad to see that hearing these stories from you guys. And I, I purposely before the podcast didn't ask a whole lot of details about like you guys hunts these year. And it went even went more in detail than I could imagine. Like the bear hunt and everything like that's incredible. It's and, uh, so it's, cool. it's cool to, cool to see you guys enjoying it the way that I do. And you can just hear it voices as far as the the passion that it comes for it and i think you know a lot of people listening to this are just the same way and ate up from it so well thank you for coming here Bo. <laughs> yeah dude as a friend and as a podcast listener it's good stuff <laughs> well appreciate it yes. i appreciate you guys coming on and, and chatting and abby for being a special guest so oh yeah Thank you. Thank you. Where, where can everybody uh, check out your stuff, your guys' stuff online? My YouTube channel is Outdoors Alley. Instagram is Outdoors underscore Alley. Fun fact, I used to just have it as Outdoors Alley without the underscore. And people, Outdoor are, Sally. people were calling me Sally. And that's when I had like 10,000 <laughs> followers. So those would be the OGs if you knew that one. Um <laughs> I'm also on TikTok, same username, and yeah, if you really want to connect with me, you can email me, and my email is in my Instagram bio. Ooh. Yeah, because a DM won't be answered, most likely, but if, you, if you're like a true person and you really want to connect, you can email me, and I'll respond. Cool. Well, thank you, guys. All right, we'll talk to you later. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit eastmeetswesthunt.com, Facebook at East Meets West Outdoors, and Instagram at East Meets West Hunt. If you enjoyed today's episode, please review and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.